Alrighty then, hopefully this is live. Yes, seems to be. Alrighty. How's everybody doing? It's been a little while since I've done one of these. Maybe I can on four weeks. Just kind of kept being busy. Here we go, right. Let me open a blender. It's been a little while as well since I've done any proper geometry nodes. I've been doing just a, like a whole bunch of freelance stuff recently, which has been much more like rendering rather than geometry nodes. So uh, I wouldn't say I'm rusty, but also I'm uh, certainly not quite at the forefront of uh, everything that's been going on and all the nodes that have been released. Here we go. All right. So let me start out by saving. Apparently, uh, Screencast Keys now lets you autosave, which is pretty cool. It's been like two years since I was last able to use autosaving. And last time, <laughs> it's going to use a raycast node to project the columns. Um, I'm not going to use the raycast node, I don't think. Because churches should be built on the flat. I think the plot should be flat. Um, and we're going to be doing columns. I, there's a lot of like repeating elements in a church. That's why I thought it would be a good one. And also because I was requested to do them, uh, is it called the Marine Throne Room from Game of Thrones? But I was looking at it and it's just like, it's all boxes. So I thought it'd be more interesting to do like a church with arches and stuff like that. It's a shame we don't have a mirror node, but we might just have to use modifiers, which is fine. All right, I've just got some references on my other screen. So I think we should probably start out with working out what we even want to make here, or like the system that we want to make. Because I think, so there's a few things that we could do. We could either just make a thing which makes one church, or what might be cool is if we make a thing where you can just like extrude a bunch of boxes and it turns it into a church, because then it's a bit more like usable, you know? You can actually use a manual input, and people like that. So let's come up with some ideas. Uh, and churches always have like different ways, uh, like different levels. Like you might have some arches along the bottom. No, <laughs> that's terrible. And then you might have like higher up arches as well that are like a smaller phase. To be honest, it's been about 25 years since I was last actually in a church. But, eh, we've got pictures. So, uh, let's just start out with trying to make a corridor of arches. I feel like it would be easier with <laughs> spur chalk. Oh, well, hopefully this will be alright. Hey, Zakat, how's it going? DD, did I enter the world of Python code? I haven't actually started coding yet. It's really bad. So I got a new job, right? I got, um, which I'm starting on not to, not the day after tomorrow, not that Monday, like Monday after on the 4th of April. Um, and I'm, I'm supposed to learn like so many things uh, and I've just not had time. Like I'm supposed to be learning C sharp and Unity and Python, and I'm just like, just not had time yet. So, oh well, we'll get there. Once the freelance stuff is finished, which I should finish this week, I was supposed to finish it yesterday, but I think there's some more revisions to come. Um, but yeah, all right. Uh, so columns, let's start out with that. Um, Columns need to join up as well. So if we've got an actual archway, 
for a start, we can ignore one half of it because it's going to be mirrored. Um, and if it's like a double backed archway like this, then we can also ignore the other side because it's going to be mirrored. So we only need to worry about this much of an arch and the rest of it can kind of follow through. I mean, if we want to do like stones going around it as well. Ah, but that might not work because we want to have a uh, like a profile on here and something fancy which should follow up the side in which case I need some way of terminating it as it splits off thanks DD yeah it should be a cool job I'm not actually sure what I'm allowed to say about it so I'm just going to say nothing today I'll, I'll find out at some point what I'm allowed to talk about and then I'll give you the lowdown but it's at Unity which is pretty nuts they're like an actual company. Like, I mean, everybody that I've worked for has been an actual company, but they're like, they're like a big company. Like someone that people have actually heard of. Okay, let's start out with an um, arc. Do we want to? Maybe a quadratic bezier would be better. So we've got three points. It's coming up in the Z axis here. So starting at zero. Can you go up to a height of, actually maybe I should do it in normalized then we can just scale it. So let's go up to a height of one and we'll go to a horizontal of one as well. Should I just do this with an arch? Maybe that would make more sense. And then it'll still scale fine. So I'm just going to do a curve and then, um, I think because we don't have a mirror modifier, because we want to do the inside of a church uh, and to get the detail on that, we're going to have to use multiple modifiers. But that should be okay. So let's try this again. We're going to go for an arch, an arc. And I want to go through three points. Starting at zero, we go up to one. And there we go. Something like, something like that. And that should scale fine because it's like normalized, right? One by one. Uh, so now what we can do is we can do a mesh to curve. Uh, sorry, curve to mesh. Uh, hello, this live is on restricted. It should be public. I can see. Uh, well, it says public from my end anyway. Uh, let's use another. Let's use a star because we could just bevel this. Ooh. Uh, and we can make this a little bit smaller. <laughs> hey, Oswin. Let's go in and in. Now, something I need to think about. I wonder if I should bend it afterwards. Because So I don't want this profile to go all the way up here. I want it to sort of split off. So I've only got the front half of it. In which case, maybe I should actually just do this straight and then use a bend on it. <laughs> you can tell I've not prepared this. Here we go, let's do this. I'm going to turn on wireframe so I can see the resolution. We are going to resample the curve. Give a little bit of resolution in there. Uh, we're going to do stuff with our star. Might even do do you know what? Maybe we can do like a proper custom profile. How would I do that? Actually, because we've got cylindrical to um, mapping, space converter. Oh wait, yeah, cylindrical to Cartesian. This one should work. Um, in ETK. Also, hey to anybody who's at Reality Hack at MIT. 
hope you're enjoying your uh, hope you're enjoying the session. And if you are there, go find Arturo at the uh, Looking Glass stand. He should be uh, he should be hanging out with you guys today. So let me grab a line, just a mesh line. Man, I've not used this node since doing the uh, I think it was the perfume bottle for the mouse house. Let's put a position into here. This should come out to a set position. And this needs to be in a different direction. I can't remember. So, oh, right, yeah. So, radius theta z. So, um, so this one, y. Hmm. What am I doing? Um, endpoints. Oh, sorry, I'm being stupid. So it should be, yeah, one and then one like that. One like that. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to understand what's going on. Hey, Jewel, how's it going? And Spool? So we've got the mesh line, which should be pi, because we're going to go for a half circle uh, in the y axis. But basically, we're making a straight line. We're going to give it a bevel, and then we're using the cylindrical to Cartesian to make it round. Then we're going to push it up this other curve, and then we're going to bend it, and then we're going to try and extrude the back faces back to give us like a, a smooth transition into the next one. Might not work, but we will see. So, uh, meshed curve. And then this is our profile. Here we go. Uh, we're doing this at one meter, that's still fine. Just means I need to make everything else small. Or maybe I should just do it full size and then scale it afterwards. Yeah. Let's go with a bend. And we are bending in the x-axis. I want to bend in the y-axis. Um, which means we need this. To go from minus, no, to go from pi by two to minus pi by two. Great. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, cylindrical to Cartesian basically converts spherical coordinates, sorry, cylindrical coordinates into Cartesian coordinates where your x input, so what was originally x is being read as if it's radius, um, and then what was originally y is being read as if it's theta, and um, what was originally said is staying as said. So that basically allows you to create cylindrical meshes. It like bends space. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I forgot I turned on the, the super chat thing. I finally worked out how to do it. And there's a pub right down the road, so I will I will get myself a half pint. Thank you. Um, right then. I'm just gonna let's let's make this a bit easier to work with. So combine X Y Z. They still can't handle junctions. Yeah, that's why. Um, yeah, I mean, just in general, in Blender, curve support is not great. So there's you know there's that, and then um, let's put these into a group. Uh, and let's join these up. Z min, Z max, X. Um, no, I can't remember what I was even saying, so I'll just stop. Okay, so radius is that first one. The second one is going to be like T min, T max. Uh, oh, right, theta, but T, uh, T 
document t max z min. Oh, I feel like we should just have one z, right? Oops. Just z, there we go. That's a little bit easier for us to use. So this is our uh, profile input. So we've got our radius controls now, and we've got our min and max points. So pi by two minus pi by two, that's fine. Uh, Z zero, that's fine. Can I say a bit about my viewport dis uh, display? Yeah, let me add a few objects in here just to make it more obvious. So uh, the colors that I use, I have my viewport display in solid shading set to flat random and I have cavity set to both with just the default values that gives you like a really easy like nice separation between stuff because obviously you get the automatic color reassignment um, I'm also turning on wireframe generally when I'm working in geometry nodes just because I can actually see the mesh so nice uh, Emmanuel the node system reminds you of grasshopper yeah it's, I mean, it's fairly close. If you want something which is way closer, then Sverchok is basically a grasshopper clone. Um, let's add a resolution in here as well. So yeah, if you want like something which is like properly grasshoppery, you can always use that. All right then, let's move this in the x-axis by some distance. I could really do this being a factor. Maybe I should do this with a curve. Because then I could use the curve factor. Or the spline factor. Or whatever it's called now. It should still be the spline factor. Yeah. Uh, so let's try this with a mesh curve. Sorry, uh, a curve line. So points. Is it still the same? Good. And does this still work? Yeah, it does. It just doesn't have any resolution. So let's add that uh, curve set resolution or resample. Is our count in there? There we go. Right, so that's our profile input. Let's use a set position. We're going to offset in the x-axis, you can see what effect that is having um, with a combine xyz. We need the x and we're going from a float curve like this. Alrighty, so now we can set whatever shape we want. Um, with this and uh, maybe we want to have this repeating as well so let's also just we have a zero to one with our factor along the length so if we just make this like repeat basically um in fact i can make it ping pong that might be easier uh, so let's multiply by six and then ping pong by one There we go. So now we're getting like zero to one to zero to one to zero to one to zero across that, like zero to six. And then this goes through our float curve. So each one of these float curves happens for each one of those zero to ones. Um, and you could actually do this. So this is like symmetrical, or sorry, not symmetrical. You could do this to like one flows into the other and that's still gonna work correctly. And I wonder if we should do this for the whole church. Or maybe not. We'll see how it goes. And then we just need a multiply on the other side uh, so that we can set the strength of our offset to be whatever we need. All right, this is looking fine. Then it comes into this one, gets bent around, and then that goes into your curve to mesh. Oh wait, we didn't need that one. So this now goes onto the other curve to mesh. And then we go into the ETK bend. This one should be bending around 
custom center zero, sorry, one zero zero, which I think should be putting around there. Oh no, that's not good. Um, how is this going to be a pain? I swear there's always problems with these bend, these bend things, because we're basically doing the same thing. I'm using the uh, <laughs> cylindrical to Cartesian to bend stuff. Hmm. I wonder what we need to do then. Maybe we need to rotate it before and after. I mean this, oh no, that's not great either. Let's do this. All right, so zero to pi. Uh, that's inward facing, that's good. And we want this to be kind of coming the other way. 90 degrees, whatever angle we want. So then we can get, get this and we can use the edges along the back spline. I wonder if we can mark them somehow. If we capture the endpoints of this input curve, then we should be able to capture uh, a boolean along that back edge as it gets extruded up, I think. So let's grab, oh yeah, we've got the named attribute stuff as well now. Uh, so capture attribute, and we're interested in capturing on the points, I think. I always get confused when I'm working with curves. Um, Ruddy. Uh, a short rundown of what's the difference between your nodes and, uh, come again. A short rundown of what's the difference between my nodes and what? Like my nodes and uh, the default nodes, or things like bend versus the simple deform modifier. Um, I mean, functionally, they're pretty similar. I, I have like better limits on mine. So you can see on this, if I change my limits, things don't spin. <laughs> like if you do this on the deform modifier, things just spin wildly out of control. Hey, Avner. Hey, Quackles, how's it going? Congrats on the level 80 feature as well, or 80 level. Such a strange write-up. Uh, let's grab our curve endpoints, endpoint selection. So we're just capturing first and last. Should be all right to go with that. And then now we should have this at the end of our uh, thing. So let's see if we can extrude this. Yeah, clocks change tonight. I thought it was Sunday. Or does that mean Sunday morning? And we're, we're losing an hour as well, so earlier mornings. Uh, extrude, let's see how we go. So right now this is extruding everything. We can set this back to edges. And let's see what happens. Hey, perfect. So uh, we don't want to use normals, we want to use an actual offset vector. So let's just plug a vector in here. Um, okay, that's the wrong way. Let's go minus y. And now we can scale this selection down to zero. Um, in fact, we can just scale it down to like actually zero, um, which is fine because it's it's on the the axis there. So just set position again. I'm going to use the same attribute. Can I? No. Let's use the top this time as our selection. 
Yeah, that's not broken. That's good. Uh, we can set our positions now to be the position, but with y equals zero. Oh wait, do I just scale it in the y? Yeah. Uh, position vector math multiply. Uh, so x and z should be one. Why is it in the middle? That shouldn't be happening. It should go to like actually zero. Oh, it's because I <laughs> ignore me. All right, there we go. So cool. Now we have a thing that looks moderately like the thing that we're after. Let's maybe reduce our bend radius a little bit. I wonder if maybe it should be straight at the bottom. Hmm. But also like longer. Let's bring back our thing. So it's getting stretched by the band, basically. Um, as you can see there. Oh yeah, no, I don't have uh, different add-ons. There's mine and there's uh, Riaz, who has Node++. That's a really good add-on, has loads of stuff in it. I think there's a few others. Oh, right, there's Bagger as well, BaggerPy. You should check that one out. That's got a lot of generators in it. Um, technically, GScatter is also using geometry nodes and Scatter5... 6? Five. 5. Scatter5 five is using geometry nodes as well. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so uh, I actually don't know when I have to turn up because we don't have core hours because it's like a universal, not universal, it's an international job, international team that I'm joining. So, uh, yeah, they're just kind of like, yeah, people have different hours. And that was as far as I got with it. So I guess I need to find out when to turn up, like specifically on my first day. But I think overall it seems pretty chill about just like, yeah, just be there. Just just be at work and you'll be all right. Um, just for the sake of seeing if this works, let's do a little bit of um, mirroring and arraying. So back to back, that's obviously going to work. And then ooh, I wonder if we should merge doubles actually in this. Uh, so this is our first arch. Saving, merge by distance. No more sleeping until noon, no. Well, the uh, the principal designer who I'm like, uh, so there should be a team lead and then there's like the principal designer who like we're sort of all working towards. Um, so he's in Seattle. So that's like a totally different time zone to me. And then there's like a bunch of people in Canada bunch of people in uh actually you know i don't know where all the team is i think sweden maybe some hey alex how's it going uh, i'm sure that's fine right let's grab uh i want to like array but with it being cut off maybe i should just boolean it is that bad? <laughs> you start at 2 p.m. I mean, I like working. I would like to have evenings off, I think. Um, I mean, I also need to learn how to code, right? So I need to maybe do that in the mornings because I will be in before America. So maybe I should spend like an hour each morning learning to code, like actually immerse myself. I just have to do it. Geometry Boolean. Mesh boolean. Um, because we don't have a bisect, I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to boolean this. Um, yeah, I am. Uh, so this can go there, and we can just use a plane in here, I guess. 
or grid. <laughs> Thanks. Wait, Adam, where do you work? Are you at Unity? I need friends on the inside. Uh, transform, here we go. So this up to 10. Rotate 90 and the x-axis. Move it somewhere. Okay, not in the x-axis. Move it in the y-axis. There we go. Perfect. Oh, this is why we love booleans, because they mess up everything all the time. Hole tolerant, there we go. Oh, God. All right, well, let's also just delete everything, which is too close to our grid. As soon as you throw in booleans, it just messes up everything. Um, hey, Rahul. Let's delete by geometry proximity, maybe. At this point, I'm kind of wishing I'd done it in Svirchok, so I could have just used the bisect node. Uh, geometry proximity delete faces by distance. So compare equals. We need to delete faces. There we go. Nice and open again. So that's a sneaky little trick. If booleans are messing you up, uh, as they often will with an open mesh like this, you can use a geometry proximity to delete everything which is like in the place of your cutter object. And then we can just array this in the correct axis. Cool. Yeah. We merge. Oh, perfect. Hmm. It's almost like it was intentional. Right. Um, I need this to be taller. Look at some of my references. Oh, they're so fancy. Like Gloucester Cathedral. We're just not going to get the detailing that you might want. But we can get some of it. Oh, it's like flying buttresses. How would I even do that? I definitely need to work out a way to uh, <laughs> make things that are a little bit more like hands-on. Now, you know the like the dilapidated house generator that somebody did? That it's basically just copying a Houdini generator, but it's still very cool. It's a very cool process, and it allows them to like extrude, extrude a building, and it will analyze basically like, okay, well, it's this tool, so it needs this many floors, and it's this. Uh, this is where the apex of the roof is, so this is where we're going to put supporting walls, and this is where, you know, just like loads of stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. It's good to like build generators like that because people can actually use them, which is nice. Now I kind of don't actually want the end ones, so maybe I should mirror this. Oh, I, yeah, I really wish that we could just set a custom mirror axis on here. Or if we just had a mirror node. This is live. Hey, Ton. Oh, Tay. <laughs> Tay Son. How's it going? Um, yeah, maybe I'll just pull it back, let's uh, just do that instead, let's just transform it backwards. Uh, so we're going back in the y-axis, this far. Oh, that saves me the boolean, because I can just use a bisect. God, I'm an idiot. All right, so let's bisect. Let's flip the bisect area. And thanks for the congrats. It's going to be fun. I, uh, <laughs> it's like one of those things that's just like suddenly happened. Like I hadn't really thought about getting a job until February, January, February. And, uh, <laughs> and then I posted on Twitter about being like, oh, I don't really feel like I'm a professional. And then oh, just a bunch of people were like, here's, here's the, some jobs you can have. And uh, one of my friends, Manu, sent me a, a thing, a link through and was like, hey, you should apply to Unity. And I was just like, ah, I don't know, like I'm, I've got an all right thing going on with the freelancing. And then this uh, design, principal designer at Unity was like, hey, you should apply to this role. 
and it was just and the rest is history. Uh, yeah, so it kind of all happened pretty abruptly. But it's exciting. I, uh, yeah, I'm hoping I can like deal with having a job. <laughs> well, because it's totally different to like running your own business. Here we go. These feel kind of like the tops. I feel like there should definitely be a straight section underneath. I mean, if you actually look at churches, they have like these, there's like a bit of a, I don't know what you'd call it, a kind of a stoppy bit at the bottom of the columns. And then there's a straight bit underneath. And then they might have another stoppy bit and then they might have the ground. I wonder if that'd be really easy to make actually. Because we've got all of our profiles already. Uh, that is if, uh, it's because it's smooth shading and I should probably just turn on. Okay, that didn't work. We should turn on. Let's just turn on hardened normals or weighted normals. There we are, weighted normals. Just use that modifier. No, it's just because it's probably got some weird angons going on. Um, oh, it doesn't even. Maybe they're just flipped. Well, there we go. Uh, remote work. Yeah, remote work for me. Hey, you think how's it going? It's like the whole gang's turning up. Am I doing modifies instead of nodes? I'm doing, um, I'm doing modifies instead of nodes because I have a, I want a mirror modifier. And, uh, yeah, there ain't no mirror unless I'm, no. There's no mirror and there's no bisect in geometry nodes, so it seems I need both. I'm doing very well, thank you, Slink. All right. No, I did a, I have already done one stream today for my Svertrop course. It's kind of nuts that we're still doing streams for that, but uh, yeah. It's fun, we talked about cube marching, or marching cubes, in, uh, in Spurtrock. Uh, right, um, we're going to use this same profile. I want to do something that's kind of, not floral exactly, but maybe has, you know, like you get like the stone leaves. I really need to stop saying like so much. Uh, is it called a Corbel in between. Let me just search this. Not exactly. That kind of thing, though. Um, in fact, here's a good example of a really floral one. A very tiny picture. You can see there's loads of detail on that, so it might be cool to do something a little bit more figuratively around the bottom. Uh, am I doing the inside or the outside of a cathedral? I am doing the inside. Yeah, I feel like there's definitely uh, a generator in there to do the outside. But for this, just like getting a scene rendered, I think it's going to be easier just to do the inside. Yeah, crackles. So scale minus one would work if you just if you just want to mirror something. <clears throat> but I need the bisect because it's um, because I don't want the full thing. I want to have used the bisect to cut off this like middle. Jeez, oh, nearly deleted everything uh, to cut off the middle section where it like finishes that curve. Um, so I can get. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, remember some times ago I asked you to estimate Blender, I compared to Houdini, I do remember this, and I said 3 out of 10. What would I say now? Hmm. I'd say we're getting towards 4. <laughs> there is so far to go. I mean, that was only like, I don't know, maybe 6 months ago. So it's significantly better than 6 months ago, right? And in terms of usability, I should have probably actually said 2 back when you asked because it was like I don't know like those of us who were doing kind of crazy stuff with geometry nodes back then 
we were just kind of hacking. We weren't doing it properly. Um, BM, see you snap to grit. I do. How do you keep nose tidy after framing them? Um, oh, it's so, I hate it so much uh, because you can, as soon as you frame something, it's like, okay, so now we're half a grid square off. So then you have to like re fix where these are. And if you've moved these and then you put in another node and it's like, oh, that's, that's funny how that like doesn't, do you know, it actually kind of works at the moment. That's weird. Have they fixed it? Maybe they have. How does geometry nodes compare to Sverchalk? Sverchalk is a totally different system. Uh, it's more about lists. Although we should be getting lists for geometry nodes because there's a lot of stuff that we need them for. So that's like, that's good news. If you like lists, it's a bit higher res, there we go. Um, that little bit is called an impost, is it? Wait, let me find this. <laughs> Hive mind strikes again. Perfect. So what we need to be making now is an impost or an abacus. Actually, I feel like I know the word abacus. So maybe, maybe this is something that I should have known before. Uh, they originally existed to hold the scaffolding. Really interesting. It's cool when they've actually got like a function they were put in there for a reason and they just kind of got absorbed into the style. Very cool. But yeah, so we need to make something which is kind of full figurative flow and that's going to be a bit tricky. Suzanne with a ring in her mouth. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe we just put Suzanne's all around it. I feel like that's what I do so much of the time. Um, I need to extrude the end of this curve line and this is causing me... Hey, maybe I don't. Maybe I can just extrude the column down. Yeah, I think I can. Um, I use mesh lines like a list, I do, but sometimes you need like an explicit list where it's like, I'm trying to think of a reason that you would need this. Um, oh, I thought of something the other day that I need lists for and now I can't remember it. But yeah, basically sometimes you need to be able to explicitly say there's a few, like Here's a bunch of stuff. There should be a Suzanne primitive node. I'm wondering if there's something which I can add to the toolkit. It might be so complex to actually make one. I would have to do it out of like individual planes and then merge by distance. <laughs> that would be so stupid, but maybe a fun challenge. Um, I could probably do it with a displacement actually. I could like bake a displacement map. Anyway, right, let me continue here. Let's. I'm going to capture again the, this time just the start point, I think. And that should give me a Boolean for this end. And then I can just extrude that down vertically. Um, I don't need this frame. Uh, so we're extruding it at the end. Don't even think I need that. Uh, so let's use another extrude mesh going to be using our captured end point or start point. We're going to be using just another vector, oh, not that one, we need a proper vector. And we're going to be going down. Look how great this works. And now we can actually use this. <laughs> George knows basically Suzanne. It would be, I don't understand why there's not why there isn't one. Uh, is there a story behind the thumbnails, teeth and eyes? 
I mean, I'm trying to squeeze them into everything now. They're actually from Monty Python, the teeth and eyes. And it's because I kind of got into a weird phase of just putting like, so, all right. So Steph from Online Render, he basically said, oh, everybody ends up putting their face on thumbnails. And I was like, I'm not going to put my face on the thumbnail because that's not me. Um, and then I caved basically immediately but I couldn't do it not ironically because I just am like not really that person. So yeah, so that's how it ended up happening. Just ended up with my face on everything, but kind of in like a meme way. And, uh, and yeah, now I just end up with weird stuff on all of the thumbnails. All right, so you can do whatever you want to these column shapes using your float curve here. Looks kind of cool. Um, I quite like that they go in now as well. That's a bit better, a bit more predictable. Um, we could always use a few more of these as well. Let's integer this. So we're going to need, actually, do you know, it seems to work with odd numbers as well. Although it will work better with even numbers. So maybe I should just multiply this by two as well. I'm just trying to make this as easy to use as possible. So let's go with this. And there we go. Now we have some super dense stuff. Maybe we can also set this. Let's use a divide here. Something divided by the number of things <laughs> should make this uh, a little bit easier to control. And then when I change the number, they should scale up accordingly. Cool. I kind of feel like there should be six. I know that's what we had before anyway. Uh, it just feels a bit more symmetrical. All right. Um, Hmm. Just like wondering how to terminate these or how to add a new layer above them. Or maybe there should be a balcony halfway. Maybe we do that. Gonna have to do something about the roof because that's going to be an interesting. Well, it's like it's arches intersecting arches, so you end up with a lot of different shapes. I think that might just have to be booleans. Unless I can do something clever with maths. And the lofting curves. I reckon we might be able to loft the ceiling, a segment of the ceiling. Basically, we're making one. Let me just, let me mute everything. So, uh, yeah, we're basically just going to come up here. Maybe this should be extruded a bit further down. Something like that is fine. Um, maybe we can also put this onto the ground with an align mesh by mesh node. There we go. Uh, and yeah, so we can put in a balcony about halfway, and that could be kind of, I don't know, something like this, maybe with like a bit of a curvature. I am vaguely using a church that I have as reference here. But only kind of vaguely. We can do that impost thing. Maybe one here. And then they've got one there as well. Uh, some kind of balustrade. Something in here. And we need another impost at the bottom for the lower section. That should be a bit higher. Um, and maybe it should be a little bit wider here. So we can scale this section along its normals, maybe. Just to grow it a little bit and then at the top I'm just going to take this straight up and this is actually what we're working to here they've got three mini arches and then one above 
as it goes up into like a tall roof level arch. So there's comes something like this. Um, and I think we should, so we don't need to worry about that curved bit because that can be part of our actual roof itself. Um, so we can like have, a so, okay, let me, what am I doing? Let me just make a, like a template so that I can like see what I'm working towards here. I'm gonna grab a cylinder and let's rotate this onto its side so I can see it. Make sure I'm saving. Grab these. And oh, I should have just done this with the mirror modify as well, but never mind. Something like this, alright. Fill both ends, duplicate, rotate 90. And we can also just pull down the bottom face there. Alright. Oh, I don't have hard ops installed anymore. Let's grab a boolean and we're just going to pick the other object. Let's apply this. Um, and that will delete these faces. Okay, extrude, scale, y, there we go. All right, so we're going for something like this. Actually, these are way back to back. Why don't I just mirror this? Um, sorry for my rambling. Um, come on. like this. Yeah, so we need to be able to make something like this basically with geometry nodes so that it can be arrayed. Um, and actually I only need like a quarter of it. So that does make things a little bit easier. So I reckon I can loft this anyway with three curves and one of them, I need to make one of them and then I can like compress it in either X or Y. And then you can just loft across them just like a linear loft. We've got a loft curves node, which can be set to linear. And we also have just transferring positions to a plane. So I don't think that's a problem. And also these curves can then be used for, and these joining ones actually, all of them can be used and the top needs it as well. Um, it can be used for, oops, um, putting on additional like stone things in the ceiling. All right. Oh yeah, cast modifier. So 
Savage Sauron. You can check your node timings in the node editor overlays timings from 3.1 and above. <laughs> oh no, us again. Go ahead. So this can be this can be a little bit bigger. But not that much bigger. Something around here. Seems about right. Have you heard of surgery theory? I don't know. Is this something I want to be searching on stream? Okay, it's maths. Um, in maths, specifically in geome geometric topology, surgery theory is a collection of techniques used to provide, sorry, used to produce one finite dimensional manifold form uh, used to produce, oh sorry, one finite dimensional manifold form from, uh, not form, from another in a controlled way. Introduced by John Milner. Um, removing an embedded sphere or dimension P from M originally developed by, unfortunately I'm not, uh, I don't know anything about maths. So these Wikipedia pages, which are like 50% uh, formula, unfortunately mean almost nothing to me. Uh, wouldn't it be easier to do normal modeling? Yes, it would. I do not recommend people work the way that I work. I work this way because I enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can get away with it. Right, let's, so we're going to put in a single arch at the top. We're going to put in three arches. Oh, that's a bad one. Three arches at the bottom. Uh, and then Yeah, and then it's all just decoration after that. We can put in a little bit of this on this side as well. Maybe to give us a little bit of a roof. Are they called cloisters? I can't remember. Something on the side there. Uh, and then we need some oh we need some way to do the end termination as well where it goes around. Might be able to do that with a curve though, just following a curve, curve modifier, or maybe a bend modifier, or bend node. We'll see when we get there. Um. All right. So I don't need to worry about this top piece for now. Let's hide that and from the render effect. Let's just let me put that into the hidden collection. That's what that's for. And uh, now we can continue. So the first thing I want to do is going to be to add imposts, I think. Or maybe we should start with the balcony because that's going to be like an actual chunk of work there. Which church is it I'm even looking at here? Oh, is it Notre Dame? No wonder it's fancy. Bannister rail, that should be fairly straightforward. Uh, again, we're doing this all in this section before it all gets mirrored and everything, so just making one chunk, basically. Let's close the preview. Um, damn, it is really fancy. If you, uh, if you get a moment, you should check out just some photos of the inside of the Notre Dame before it burnt down. Just incredible craftsmanship. Let me find the best way to do this. There are so many things which are like booleans though, which are gonna cause problems. Unless we can find alternate ways to kind of wrangle them. Or we could do them with shaders. That would probably be easier. Let's just get the general structure in. Um, yeah. 
So Vanity Rail can just be lofted. Um, we need some kind of shape to it. And we've already come up with a way for creating specific shapes for loftable curves. So I'm just going to pull all of this together. Don't think I'm going to need the capture attribute for the ends. But I might just add it anyway. And the curve mesh. Let's duplicate this down. Um, this is going to be, let's, let's start framing and naming. This is our main main arch. And the one that we're working on now is going to be just a regular old um, bit of banister, a balcony. Um, yeah. This picture is really annoying because it's broken up into frames and like the bit I want to look at is between two. Yeah, I could definitely do with learning some calculus. When I see don't when I see stuff like differential equations, I just my brain just says no. It's just not having it. I have no idea how people like really get their head into the math side of things. Zero, zero, let's go in the y-axis, maybe three. I can't remember how long our thing is, but it should be fine. Um, let's grab another bit. We don't need necessarily the same profile here. And we've probably want fewer. Let's go this way with two and let's make some sharp corners in here as well. Uh, so you can use sharp corners just by clicking on this little vector button. Saves you a bunch of time. So we can do something like this. I'm going to bring out a section in the middle here. And I want it to be nice and round at the top there. Something like that is fine. Uh, maybe we can do... Um, some kind of patination along here. I mean, it basically just needs to be applied decoration rather than booleans. I want to avoid booleans like the plague. So what we want to do, let's maybe stick on like a, oh, if we do anything twisted, it's going to mirror. But I, that's probably fine. Uh, so we'll just, it's going to be such a small detail, so we'll just let that happen. In which case we can use just a line and like a star that's maybe been filleted. So a star with a, oops, um, let's make this small and fill it curve, limit radius. Something like that. There we go. And now we can stick this along the same curve line. We'll move it afterwards. Uh, so curve to mesh. Going this way. And we can now twist this. So curve tilt. Which we can use multiply. And before this, a factor. There we go. Oh, and we need to resample. So curve resample a bunch. There we go. Nice. Alrighty, so that's that. We can apply an additional row of stuff underneath and then we can do some little arches. Yeah, so we're just building stuff up. Hey Sam, how's it going? Sam H. Let's join these up. 
like so. This is, oh, it's huge. Uh, let's do a transform, make sure it's being positioned in the correct place. Which can be inside that little nook there. And now we just need to make this smaller. So inner radius, outer radius. Something like that maybe, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. Maybe a little bit more, 0.06, because we're going to do the fillet. 0.005, there we go. adequate. That's what I like. And then, yeah, we'll just do something applied on here as just an array down its length. And then we'll do something with an arch underneath. And we also need to add a kind of top to this banister rail. I'm just going to call this bit rope. Control J. And yeah, we actually did need to use this capture attribute. So we need to extrude it up a little bit and then in, up and out. Maybe there's a way for us to actually do this. We're, we're obscuring that middle section, so that's fine. Um, let's bring these back. Oh, and then that's not gonna, that's not gonna, okay, let me undo that, that's fine. Um, right, let's just extrude like normal then. So extrude, we're gonna be taking our attribute from this selection, we're gonna be grabbing edges, and, I need to know if it's a beginning or an end, because I need to go in opposite directions. Not really, I just need to scale them both towards the middle. Let's just do that. So extrude mesh. Uh, so now we have extra stuff and then we can pull them towards the middle. Okay, so here's a reason that we might want a list is if you want to do, wanted to do multiple extrusions, rather than it just being one, you might want a dynamic number um, and you might want them all to have different matrices based on some list of inputs. It's not geometry dependent, it's operation dependent because I want to have like five. I don't want it to be like well, there's 267 vertices, so we're going to do 260. Like, that's not useful. I need lists to actually be able to control the data. Anyway, uh, we are going to just scale these towards zero. So, set position, top is our selection. Position, which is going to be, again, vector math, multiply, one in the Y, one in the Z, and now it is pretending to be closed. And we can merge by distance. We can uh, I was just wondering if we can pull it up a little bit. It's not exactly smooth, but we're always going to be below it, so it's fine. In fact, I probably didn't even need to close it, but for the sake of completeness. Uh, this thing is really chunky, considering where it's going. I wonder if we should make it a bit thinner, um, which I can do by just setting the curve radius. Uh, curve radius in here. And there we go. Nice. You generally don't want to just scale something down. Um, well, you might do, but in this case, at least. It's easier to use the curve radius because I don't want to mess up everything that I've done before, especially if you're using normalized values, which I'm not, but if you were to be, you know, things with a scale of one or size of one, then this is just going to make your life easier to do this a bit more procedurally. Uh, I could find where this is analytically, but 
the fact is it's easier often to just manually position stuff. Something like that is fine. Again, we're going to do a row of stuff underneath. See what's available. You know, it kind of looks like the same profile. So, uh, the same profile as, a, as above, or as this one? Maybe it's this one. Yeah, we'll just use this one. Oh, wait, that saves us from searching. Um, and I'll just put it onto a circle and make some kind of torus thing and scale it. The goal is just to be like <laughs> decorative, to give the sense of something being decorative. If you're doing actual work for a client, you should definitely put in more thought than I am here. But uh, it's all good fun. Right, curve circle, mesh to curve, something like this. Let's maybe transform this, or oh, maybe we can just tilt it. Minus 90. And then we can scale this down. I mean, it doesn't look amazing. Let's try this one. one does look a little bit better. I mean, it still looks kind of dumb. Uh, let's, well, we'll just go with it. By the time it's rendered and it's taking up like five pixels, no one's going to see. Let's transform this, let's squeeze it in. Uh, something like this. Yeah, that's probably all right. Uh, and then we can just array it. Uh, so let's grab a linear array. How should we do a curve array along spline? Because I've already got splines, haven't I? That might just be easier. So here's your geometry. Here's your spline. Also going to need moving. Oh, and it needs to be, needs to be so much smaller. Uh, we'll do that in a minute, right? Let's uh, throw it on here and we'll view the outputs. Man, it feels like November all over again. Just making random stuff. This needs to be way smaller. like that. Let's maybe rotate these and apparently not that axis. Yeah, that one. Uh, we can now just position these as desired. Is this going up or is this just like a... Okay, I think it's just an illusion from having those those twists. I think maybe it needs to twist more on the rope bit. Should be something like that. All right. Let's position these into place. Oh, they're still way too big. Oh my god. Needs to be like half the size. Uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.05. Maybe even smaller. That'll do. Let's get these positioned somewhere. Hey, workflow, how's it going? Yeah. And we need to have a few more. So as our rate, we need a bunch. Have we stopped before the end? What's going on? 
Oh yeah, we have. Foolish. There we go. Cool. Right, let's add another bit. We need the balustrade. Is that what it's called? Underneath. I'm like forgetting all of my architectural naming today. like the ornaments i'm just i'm making sure i'm framing stuff because i'm going to need to find it later if i add shaders we might just do a clay render but uh it's always good to keep things organized hey noir yeah there's loads of people been doing these endless flight loops which is pretty neat i mean i didn't come up with it originally but it's cool to see people following the tutorial um, anyway, yeah, the ornaments. I don't know what they're called, like shells. Let's go with that. Yeah, so now we just need some little arches underneath. How are we going to make these work? <coughs> Do you know what? We can do the exact same thing that we've been doing the whole time with all of our float curve stuff because we've got a curve which runs along here. We can displace it or offset it with a repeating curve pattern and then we can loft across it with another repeating curve pattern to give us a profile. And then I can just stick some like barley twists underneath or whatever they're called, the uh, rope style banister pieces. Hey, thanks Kelly. Kelly, this is like a follow-on to your question about the the throne room. I was looking at pictures of the throne room and I just thought, you know what, it's kind of, it's a bit blocky. Like I thought if we were to go through it, it would be maybe quite repetitive as a process and maybe it would be better to learn from like a bigger, um, or at least like more decorative scheme like this. I mean, again, it's all quite repetitive, but it's a little bit more on the technical side. Um, so let's do the same thing again. Let's grab our curve. And we need to offset it. This one we are offsetting in the Z axis. Is that right? Um, I mean, I think. It's something like that. Oh yeah, so we've got this one and we just need to not do the... Gotcha, gotcha. So let's just grab these. Shift D, speed the output of this. This one's going to the Z axis. And we're going into the negative distance. And we can just reset that for now. And we want just a bunch. We need so many of these. Something like this and I'm actually just going to get rid of that. Let's do a constant offset. High account in here. There we go. Got our arches. We'll move this down. Uh, we'll, let's do a curve to mesh first. So curve to mesh. Well, let's just use the same profile again. And we need to set the radius. So curve, set radius. Scooch that one in. Okay. I feel like I need to split it every corner. Um, oh, too easy, no. I just think if there's, you know, because these videos end up being that's, I feel like there's something that can be learnt from in them. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of worth doing things which are a bit more of like a project. Let's move these a little bit. Oh, it's going to be difficult to get this to actually look good. Let's 
especially with those corners tapering in like that, that's frustrating. Might have to delete a bunch of points. And then, so, okay, so curve to mesh, mesh to curve. Curve to mesh without any profile. And then we're going to delete geometry. We're going to delete points where the position. Uh, okay, so we need a less than float. We need Z from a separate XYZ, and we need the position. And now we can just delete the bottom corners. Approximately, let's use more points in here so it's actually a little bit smoother there. Once these are separated out, they should look a little bit better as curves. So um, curve to, oh wait, no, mesh to curve this time. And there we go, that goes in there. And we need to do our radius at the end. Cool. So now we've got all of these points. These can all be handled. With the top of the twist bit, I feel like these need to be even smaller. Transform overall. Join this into our join geometry. Let's just see how this is looking. Um, <clears throat> Why is that offset so far? Oh, because we're doing, okay, so for, we can set that radius back to zero, there we go. Oh, and we can set the Z on here. Excellent. Um, maybe we don't do that actually because we are deleting by Z height. So let's set that back to zero. I'm just gonna pull this down in the Z height at the end. Do something like that. So we're hiding all of the crimes along the top and we can make it a bit shorter. <laughs> Procedural Cathedral. I was uh, I was thinking of you, Kate, because uh, I feel like you did one of these like a long time ago. You were making arches and things. It made me want to do one. Uh, I might just leave these open rather than filling them in. Uh, or I could... Oh, so many options. Uh, if I use the after the capture attribute, then that is going to allow me to use my attribute to extrude my edges. Let's just make some space here. Do an extrude. Oh, gosh, that's uh, spiky. Uh, Use this attribute, we're going to grab our edges and we're just going to pull them in the z-axis. I should write a book on nodes. I actually planned to write a book a while ago. It was, um, I think it was called like the node cookbook or something like that. Uh, I can't even remember it now. It was like maybe getting on two years, but that was going to be all about shader nodes. Um, and I had I had somebody actually approach me about doing it, which was pretty cool. Uh, I think they were like a publishing house in India, and at the end it was just like, oh, you know what? Blender changes so fast. Like I could have probably done one about shaders, but I don't know. It's just it's seeing stuff suddenly change. Even when I've made a tutorial, which takes like a day, and th then you know the next week everything changes, and it's like, oh man, all of that work. So, but hats off to everybody who's doing written tutorial content. That is a lot of work. <laughs> like notes for dummies. That would be, uh, I mean, it would definitely work as a series. I think people would appreciate having written content. I know there's a lot of people who uh, sort of lament the lack of written content for geometry nodes or, you know, for Blender in general. Scale it up in the X. Here we go. Right, let's add a little thing 
do you know what? Maybe we just do like loads of. It's kind of greeble, greebling. Um, like a curve, a uh, star twisted around a circle to get that like rope effect. I need, I need another bit. I need a tapered section. Right, so we are. I need this to taper in. So I just scaled that up in general and that's not what I want to do. I want to do it based on the Z position so that I can taper it. Set position. And we're gonna do this based on Z. So what do I need? I need a vector math, multiply. Coming from the position, this is going to be multiplied by some vector, which is like something in the X for us to multiply by, and then one in Y and Z, so that we're not changing the Y and the Z. There we go, you can see that's all just flat now. And the X is going to be based on the Z position. So let's, uh, are we going to put it through a float curve so that we can taper it nicely? which can be from zero to one, so that's fine. So we can just go float curve here. And the value is gonna come off a map range, which we can use to remap the Z from the position. There we go. So, we need to come from minus 0.3 to about minus 0.6. And now we can see these taper but not <laughs> not all the way down. Why is this going from 0 to oh is it because it's not actually scaled? No, it is scaled. Hmm. Oh yeah, I got it. I got it. All right. Um, we want to go the other way anyway. But now we're getting this pinching in the middle. Probably all right. So we can go for a roundabout circle at the bottom. Um, oh, and I want it to be like two at the top. So, all right, let's go back to being like 2.5 at the top. And now we can just scale it down at the bottom. There we go. That's a bit cleaner. Looks a bit better. We can just fit circle kind of uh, cowling or whatever it looks like at the bottom. Oh, well, my hair is real quiffy today. I had a haircut the other day. And uh, it's like just the same length as where I wear my headphones. Very frustrating. All right. Uh, let's add a piece at the bottom. Again, it's going to be a curve. We need to just make this shape, something like this. And then we can loft it around a circle. Or we could just use this. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's just do that. So this is like the mini arch. Bannister arch. What's this top bit? This is the actual bannister handrail. Hey, pancakes, how's it going? <laughs> Joe, no worries. It's always fun to. I mean, I'm just playing, really. I'm just messing around. If people manage to get some content out of it, that's great. I know like, when people follow these as if they're tutorials and they're like, ah, oh, look what I did. It's like, well, I'm like, I'm more impressed that people follow along because they're often so rambling, like with so many tangents. So, uh, yeah, always impressive when people can follow them. 
Notes have no books at all. Somebody actually emailed me a few days ago asking for written content on Blender. And it was like, do you know, I don't know any written content except from a guy called Lawrence Pompey on Twitter who does or has, I think, two written tutorials on coffee. Um, like on the website coffee about Blender. But they're for like rigging. So it's a little bit different. All right. Um, yeah, a lot of work to do the written ones and they get, they get obsolete so quickly, especially for geometry node stuff. Like I get doing it for rigging, something which is fairly consistent now in terms of the development cycle. But yeah, geometry nodes is changing so quick. Enjoying your Saturday with some AI. What is your, uh, what's your current AI project? Just make this a little bit more figurative here. Are you still working with uh, GANs? Are they called GANs? GANs? I know you did some cool stuff a while ago with some image, image based things. Awesome. Right. Uh, what other mediums do you use? Do, do I personally use? Or uh, like as a tutorial maker? As a creative? I'm a, I really need to get more into just making stuff in general. I was, I used to draw a lot like I would never leave the house without a sketchbook. I would like enter sketchbook competitions all the time. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so I used to draw a lot. Um, and I like still kind of understand a lot about drawing. Um, give us the jump, you know, keys to the future. Thanks for all these donations, by the way. You do realize that you're paying <laughs> to make these comments. Thanks. Uh, thanks for doing that, though. Um, yeah, so the critter brushes i'm really into like the heavy paint look um like the thick paint look so the those rgb wet brush, rgba wet brushes were just so great hey antoine bagger uh, if you know bagpie he just entered the chat have i tried twitch i never really got on with twitch because the searchability like you just can't search it's not a search. It's not good for searching. You can't find content, which I found kind of frustrating because it's like, I don't know, like I feel like I want to be able to search for content. Um, and equally to, to make content, like a lot of people arrive at these streams. Like if I look at the analytics, a lot of people arrive at them just from like the search or the homepage or something. So they're not necessarily coming because I've linked to it. Um, and also like I've already got a YouTube channel and these videos stay up as kind of content to keep the channel alive when I don't have time for tutorials. So, and I'm not making much progress here. Like old times art rage. Yes, I actually have art rage. There's a new one that just came out art rage fighty, I think it's called. Um, yeah, I, didn't really get on with their like mixing engine and stuff. Yeah, I think if I was to sp if I was to jump onto Twitch for streaming, I would do it for like reading a book or something, you know, like a totally different kind of content, which might be cool, like to do audiobooks or something like that. Um, but I don't know if I'd do it for geometry nodes or like for Blender in general or for 3D in general. Uh, we will be getting into Unity at some point because I have to learn it because I work there now. It's just kind of awkward that I am um, so bad. Let's bring these up. So to make this section, I need to make a curve. And again, it's just like the float curve because I'm doing it all as manually as I can. In fact, we might be able to get this shape with a Bezier segment because we can just do like point point, 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 and that should be fine. So let's grab a curve primitive Bezier segment and I will view this. Where does this one go? Something like 
this one, I think. Less round than I was hoping. Maybe we do need to do it with a proper float curve. Way too pointy. All right. Um, it's going to be difficult to get this like recurve. But again, it's going to be so small in the display, so maybe it would be good because I can do something like this, and then we can have an actual shape. Uh, would I say I tend to lean into more technical and artistic sides? I have been channeled by having an audience and by wanting to, um, like, maintain an audience. So I think it's it's pushed me more into I mean I mean it's on, it's like it's on me as well right doing my whole brand is like around blender proceduralism um but yeah I would for sure be doing more kind of like illustration work I guess I have a lot of projects that I want to do which are very illustrative and I just haven't really found time to do them to work on them uh and that's just because whenever I make stuff, I'm like, oh, I have to do, uh, <laughs> I have to do content for like, for this brand. Telling us the behind stories of your geometry notes creations, <laughs> like law. That would be pretty funny. How long have I been using Blender? 14 years. I'm, uh, I've been using it for a long time, most of my life. Well, not most, just just over half of my life. It's long enough, isn't it? Let's make this a little bit taller, a little bit less severe. There we go. All right. Uh, a float curve line. We're just doing the same thing again. So we need this section, profile. Duplicate Alt P. Again, we're going into the Z axis. Um, in fact, maybe we're not. Maybe we are going the Y axis in this case. Or the X axis. X, because we're doing curve profiles. Uh, and we're going to loft this around a circle. We'll create one node to roll them all. That's the goal. I would love to do like a, <laughs> a generate all node that would be so ridiculous what well, you know when people are like the where's the make art button that's what i want to make grab a curved circle mesh uh, curve to mesh off topic question what's the easiest way to find the closest point in the same mesh i don't believe you can do it not easily anyway uh, because there's no way to loop through points, there's no way to question the KD tree. I mean, if you're happy to do it not in geometry nodes, then you can do it in Svertrock. Nice and easy. Um, how do you get started with geometry nodes? A simple step, you know, maybe less of what I'm doing here and more like the hexagon tutorial that I made or the endless loop tutorial where it's like, oh, here's how we can do a little bit of displacement. Here's how we can do a little bit of like transforming something with ray casts and understanding those nodes. I've got a few tutorials, the Geometry Nodes 101 series, which just helps people get into general geometry nodes as well. Set radius. Scale this down a little bit. Um, can Svertrock handle recursion? Uh, yeah, Svertrock, every node automatically loops. That's one of the best things about Svertrock, is that it's like every node is a parallel loop. And you can also do manual loops like 
additionally as well but like if you plug in a list of things it's going to just loop through all of those elements naturally it's great i love spurchock let's go a bit lower res on here maybe down to 12. we're going to end up with a lot of vertices in this oh my god let's already just go in and maybe change some of these You've got to try it. Yeah, it's great. Spectrog is great. It's uh, there's there haven't been any updates for a while. The maintainer is in Ukraine and obviously world affairs. So, uh, but it does it does still work. So I'll be interested to see how it how the maintaining works. Yeah, Spectrog is an add-on for Blender. Let me find you the link. Uh, Add on GitHub. Nautikin. There we go. It's uh, it's Russian for cricket, so it's like a direct clone kind of copy of Grasshopper. It's kind of a play on words for it. Oh, we've run into our half square offset with frames. Man, that's not very nice. Where are all of our, what are we doing here? We need our little arches underneath the banister arch. And we need, oh, there, here it is, 2,700, that's too many. There we go. Uh, somewhere around there is fine. It's a little bit lower resolution and we are also dealing with our re-sampling. That was on the rope, and there should be another one for the shells. And there we go, that's one, and this one is just crazy. All right, that's a bit better. Uh, what do you think of how long it'll take for geometry nodes to completely replace Spurchock? Now that's difficult to say because Spurchock has so many functions. In fact, if I just show you how many, I don't even have the full Spurchock installed, but we've got like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of nodes. In fact, I think it's about 700 nodes. So there is so much that this can do and a lot of it is targeted at making meshes and architectural design and just design in general. But there's so many things which are really useful for procedural workflows though. Things like bisect, 2D crops, uh, 2D crops. We've got like smoothing and relaxing meshes, uh, all of the inset stuff, obviously. I mean, we, we don't even have inset yet for geometry nodes. So there's a long way still for geometry nodes to come. All of these analyzers as well, right? Like we've got so many nodes. This is what you were talking about before. Um, uh, oh, Mansour, because like the KTT closest vert, closest edge, closest path, uh, stuff like that. Like being able to do, being able to analyze within the same mesh. And because this is all Python based, it uses the same like list management protocol, I guess, as Python. I mean, even just nodes like the component analyzer, which does so many different things. And it's like, okay, I want to analyze the numbers, uh, like the faces, and I'm interested in the matrices of the faces or the, the which edges does this face have or something like that. Like this way of having like one central node, which does a bunch of stuff versus geometry nodes with dozens and dozens of just like atomic input nodes. It's frustrating. I would much rather have one node that does a bunch of stuff. And then you can just keep adding functions to that one node. You don't need to just keep adding all of these tiny, tiny nodes. I don't know if that's like a versioning nightmare and maybe that's why they've done it different, but from like a usability point of view. Um, yeah, I mean, Geometry Nodes is great for sure and it's really powerful and um, you can do a huge amount with it. It's just 
but it has a little way to go still. I think a lot of people get frustrated with it. I see a lot of like comments from people and tweets and things of people um, on the one hand being like absolutely thrilled that we have procedural workflows in Blender, which is obviously great. Uh, but then on the other side, you have a lot of people who are just like condemning it really badly because it's not Houdini. It's like Houdini's been around for a little while, you know. All right, so where are we working? We should have a little thing in here. Uh, we need to array this. I'm just going to use a linear array this time. And our start point can be moved down a little bit. Uh, yeah, the once you understand, well, well, yeah. So if understanding the data flow at all is causing you problems, then obviously that's going to be like the main thing to overcome. Um, but if you're point two, maybe a bit more. Um, but yeah, once you get it, it's it's great. It just makes so much sense. Like it's, it feels really logical once you understand it. Something maybe about this big. And this needs to be very slightly bigger. Cool. And I think I'm just going to go for one. I don't need these. I don't need this. I don't need that. There we go. So now it's just one profile for the float curve. Coming down. Um, Let's simplify this a little bit. And here we go. Right, let's bring this in. We're going to do a round over at the top. You should make a tune shader that does outlines. Yeah, well, you can do the inverse whole thing. And there's a few other things you can do, actually. There's. I mean, there's the whole like NPR engine malt. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I know a bunch of people on Discord have been playing with it. Um, although not for a while that I've seen. I don't know how the development's going on that. Uh, I'm not too active on the NPR blender front. But yeah, I definitely want to do more NPR stuff. I think it's really fun. Let's make it just a few little points on here. Just saying some of these to the vector points of the sharp, and then I can create something a little bit more interesting like this. I think we want to be in a little bit of the top as well here. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, the float curve process. It's like the only way that you can like reasonably get uh, like proper control inside geometry nodes. Ooh, I'm not sure about this. Um, <laughs> this array. Let's. So we're doing an offset here. Let's bring this in a tiny bit more. Oh, do you know what? Maybe that was. Maybe that's working. That she seems to be keeping more or less. It's very slightly out. Let's go in like a tiny bit. Really small bit. There we go. Fresnel can also make cool outlines. It can, but it's super dependent on uh, your geometry, because obviously if you have a surface which is like facing away from you and is flat, then you get a constant Fresnel across the whole thing. There was a video about getting pixel perfect outlines actually. I don't know if it was in Blender though, I think it might have been Unreal. Uh, pretty cool though. Alright, so I'm going to use this array linear, I'm going to join in my like barley twist legs underneath, which is just like a straight line which is twisted, kind of like the ropes. And 
and at the bottom maybe we just put in another one of these cowling things flipped upside down let's do that like so and we will just rotate the x-axis 180 degrees and we will move it down in z and then I'll put that onto just like a another extruded lump just to give it something so oh we haven't pulled these in at all at the bottom is that going to be a problem oh wait I can just camp this <laughs> no I can't <laughs> um, can I just do it this way That looks cool as hell, but it's uh, definitely the wrong scale now. Uh, but at least we can cap it. I don't know why this didn't work to cap. I feel like it should have done. Interesting. Oh well. We'll just leave it uncapped for now. Um, and we'll just make sure our twists go like up into it and clip in. So let's grab a curve line. We are working below the z-axis here for some reason. Let's find out what height this is. Paste cursor location. I don't know if that's like a default thing now. I'm pretty sure it was still just the add-on that somebody made for me during November. Josh from Serpens. Shout out to you if you ever watch this. Still using your add-on. It's like copy cursor location. You can find it if you search copy cursor location on my Discord. I think it was in the general chat. You should be able to find it. And this just wants to go up vertically. So direction is fine. Let's just join that up. The Oh, that's weird. Just maybe. Oh, maybe are things getting scaled? Oh, it's because the uh, it's because the array is moving things. So actually, that didn't help me. But we can just move stuff down. There we go. Something like this. We need to resample. We need to set the curve curl. So set curve tilt we can set this based on the curve factor which will be multiplied by some value so factor and this will come through a star which is filleted to give us our profile for the barley twist uh, If you type in star it doesn't come up with it. Curve primitive star. Curve to mesh. Uh, actually we need this to be a fillet or fillet. And that can join in there. Alrighty then. This is because our star is huge. Everything in Blender, like the default values, are always like one or two meters, which is huge. If you're making anything for a person, you obviously want it to be much, much smaller. Just search the gumroad of the copy cursor seems to be dead, does it? Wait, did I say gumroad? I meant Discord. Um, copy cursor. Oh, there's only one result and it's this one you can try that I'm not sure if it's um... how do you prepare a blend mesh to be rigged rigged in moho like mo what do you mean moho like mocap like mo mo yeah 
load gap. Um, how do you prepare a blend mesh? I'm not really sure about your question. Um, do you mean how do you prepare something in Blender to be rigged? Or do you mean how do you prepare? Hmm. <laughs> re, re, uh, if you could reword that, that would be great. So let me set this radius down to, oh. Moho used to be called Anime Studio. Oh, do you mean like how do you rig a mesh for like 2D style animation? You should talk to, let me find his Twitter account. Pierre. Which I believe is actually not his name, uh, but this guy does such good work for like anime style. Check him out. He's done one recently. I mean, even just like his pinned one of uh, Jelaine. So good. And he does so much work that's all just like stylized stuff. Um, yeah, he does good work. I recommend. I recommend checking him out and have a chat to him about things like abnormal for doing normal controls because that's one of the biggest things. Um, and also with normal control, um, oh, is he called Astalon on my Discord? Uh, hmm. I can't remember his name now, that's annoying. Uh, there's a guy on my Discord who's been doing a lot of stuff with controlling normals on 3D models. Yeah, I can't find it now. But yeah, but that's one of the biggest things with anime is that, you know, you need to like be able to control the lighting and you're faking it a lot of the time because your actual 3D model is not the shape that the light should be. You have to control the shadow shape as it comes across here. Um, I mean, isn't Moho... I'm just looking at Moho now. It looks like 2D animation. Can it actually, can it take 3D models? It looks like a cool bit of software anyway. This is it. I think you'd have to, oh, see you later, pancakes. Oh, not for education, I mean like, how do I use it? Smart bones, Vitruvian bones. Hmm. 2.5D, I see. Well, I would assume, really, you probably just want relatively low poly, probably quad topology, so that you've got a decent, predictable animation deformation. Um, yeah, that's cool. I really need to get back into doing animation. I used to do a little bit of 2D animation. Let's make a model in Blender and then take advantage of the tune shading in Moho and rig it in Moho. I would just find out what the import process is, to be honest. I wouldn't, um, yeah, just make your model as like as low poly as possible. Within reason, I guess. Um, I'm not sure how the rigging translates though. I would assume it's probably fairly consistent though because they have to be comparable with uh, 
industry workflows. Oh, they did cartoon. They did. Uh, they're, they're what cartoon Celine used for Wolfwalkers. If Kate's still here, she'll be thrilled to hear about that. Is it made by Cartoon Saloon? No. Very cool that they use it for all their stuff though. Yeah, you should just have a look at the um, <laughs> the export process or the import process for uh, for the thing. It might be one of those things where you need to basically work out your own process, um, which you find a lot with like professional workflows. Linux radius. You can export an OBJ, but every source you found so far says nothing on how to rig a 3D mesh in Moho. Interesting. Let me do a quick Google here. So rigging in Moho 3D. Looks like this person is using smart bones. Um, you can try something like that. I mean, again, it's just going to be Googling it, right? So, yeah, I'm not really much of a rigger myself, so it sounds very cool, but definitely not something that I'm particularly familiar with. Right, let's bring these down here. And <laughs> quick computation. I wish I could learn things that quickly. That would really make my life so much easier. Alas, I cannot do something point point zero four five point zero. Five five. Make some more points. Oh yeah, this is not looking super happy. There we go, that's a bit better. Um, it's difficult to know how to splice these together. I think they should stick in on the bottom, but then it's going to reveal that the uh, that it's a it's a all kind of scooched together. Let's bring that a little bit further. Let's um, oops. extend that bit a little bit, and maybe we can extrude this. Oh. And we want to make these a little bit smaller, 0 0.035, 0 0.05. Yeah, that'll do. Only going to be seen from a distance. I don't know why I'm spending so much time on it. Let's do that. View the output of the whole thing. This is looking very fancy. We just need a bottom section for it to all sit on. And, uh, and then we can build the actual rest of the balcony. Hey, Alex. Oh, we're only two hours in? Man, there's me thinking my legs were getting tired. All right, bottom section. Is going to be basically the same as the top. In fact, I can probably just copy the top handrail section here we go just shift D rename this one to handrail base copy you up and we're just gonna transform how uh, we can get rid of all this extrude r extrude mesh rubbish don't need any of that gonna 
scaling the Z. No, I don't want to do an inverse scaling because then you're going to flip normals. I'm going to just rotate it in the Y axis. I think that should be fine, 180. And then we're going to move it down. Something like this. It can be way smaller for the base. And that should probably be fine. Actually, that is probably entirely fine. That's, that's I'll take it. Uh, we have a lot of duplicated nodes, though, so let's actually no. Let's not do that. Let's copy it from here instead. There we go. Great. Control J. Oh no! Did I break something? Answer is undoubtedly yes. What did I do? Oh, did I? I think I control X a uh, curved mesh. There we go. Foolish. Sweet. Right, let's plug this ridiculous thing together. Control J. This is our railing, I guess. And yes, this would have probably been quicker to do in a bit more of a like mixed process. A little bit of a... Yeah, like some things are better done procedurally, some things... Yeah, to be fair, I think a lot of this would have probably been better done traditionally, but never mind. Transform. Join. How are we looking? Let's bring this one across. I need to make sure I'm constantly overlapping that middle section. Oh, we totally guessed that. Really well. All right, let's move this back a little bit. I clip nicely. And I also want to center over that middle axis there. That's good enough. Now what happens if we mirror? Almost good. We need to realize instances though. We do have that flipping in the middle there, but that's all right. Um, our banister shells. We can make these a little bit longer. That's all right. Um, and then when this gets a raid and harder normals, it's all coming together. Right. The next thing we need to do is stick on a bit of a balcony edge. I'm not sure if this needs any. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not sure if it needs any decoration, but yes, of course it does. Oh boy. Well. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to be something that I can just pretend isn't there. And we're going to need some kind of detailing underneath as well. Um, and then we can do, all oh, right, I think I'm like looking at this picture of the, uh, of um, Notre Dame being like, wow, how did I not realize I was going to bite off more than I could chew here? Like famous for being one of the most like decorative cathedrals in the world. At least I didn't do Gaudi. That would have been that would have been ridiculous. Right, uh, the the bottom section here just needs to be kind of a block with some. Well, okay, so it, 
not quite kind of a block. It needs a top section, and then it needs a straight front, and then it needs a bottom section. And that's like the whole thing. But this middle section needs to be covered in like flowers or something. Which might be a bit fiddly. But it's fine, it's fine. We've got to work through it. So it's the same as always. We're just going to grab um, a mesh line. I'm going to just grab these again. We don't need to revolve it. We just need just add some ceiling fans. It's just it's what you always have in uh, in churches, ceiling fans. Actually, I wonder if maybe that is like something you have in America. We certainly don't have them here, although it's definitely a bit colder. Where are we looking? All right. <laughs> What's that part possibly do anything but there anyway? Let's set our radius value back here. Um, we could just, um, don't need any of these, don't need them. Just simplify this down a little bit. Going positive. Let's reset this. Going to be the same top and bottom. And I'm going to come out as far as I can. We can use the multiply. I just want to use the full space. Right, we can always reduce it. Can always set this a bit higher as well. Um, oh man, I can smell people eating dinner downstairs. It smells so good. So we're going to get the whole lip. Oh, was I going to do? I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we want another one at the other end, a little bump. Grab a little vector one here. There we go, and that could be the base. I've done it upside down, but that's probably all right. We're going to just reduce this a little bit. We are going to also do this. Uh, we're going to grab our ends with a capture attribute and set this to boolean set this to end point selection because we want to capture the a yes on each end and oh do you know what do we need to do this yeah um because then we can do our curved mesh i was thinking maybe we could just extrude it first but i don't think you can extrude curves can you It'd be very useful if you could no, needs to be a mesh. It's a shame. All right, so change this to a profile curve. We need to have just a curve line on here. I should probably build this into the uh, to the banister section because we've got all of our edges, like all of our lines and things in place in various locations. So this one, it is there. Let's just delete this outside one. How did you put your toolkit into the Shift A context menu? It gets declared at um, a startup. It's really easy actually. There's if you want to find code that you already have locally, find the Node Presets add-on. Everybody has this one, the Node Presets add-on, and it adds. Uh, you know, if I just turn this on. Then you'll see I now also have a templates category in here. So it's just worth knowing that the um, that the code for it basically is in there and you can lift it because it's all GPL. So you can copy it as you want. Huh. Why did that do nothing? Do I need to rotate this? Huh. 
Huh. Oh, it's because I've got the rest of these on. Ignore me, I'm being daft. All right. Uh, we can set a curve radius. Bring that in a little bit. Something around there. And then we can now use our extrude mesh. on this selection of the edges with a specific offset for the vector going in the negative x direction. Just, just get them in a decent amount so that we get a bit of a ceiling as well as a floor. Not that we'll ever see the floor, but it does give us something to work off. And then we can just, we can just plug that in there. Not quite, we need to move it down first as well. So let's move this one down a little bit and also forwards a little bit. This is looking real swanky. So once we've done this bit, now we can do the flower-ish design. I need a bit of a kind of petal shape like this um, I wonder if I can cast it to a sphere and get that kind of curvature that way in which case we could probably do it quite easily so let's just take a curve line as per usual and it doesn't really matter what size this is we can scale it afterwards let's grab a curved mesh a greek temple thank you it's certainly becoming quite um ornamental uh right corinthian style yeah, I don't really know my classic architectures. I've got some books on it, so I should probably read them at some point. It's just always finding the time to read. When I when I rebuilt my studio last year, I bought like I spent like a lot of money on buying books because I was like, oh, I'm gonna have I've got a bookcase, I can buy books, and I bought like a bunch of art books and a bunch of things like the um, the Illusion of Life, which is that Disney animation one. There's the 2001 file, which has like all of the concept art behind 2001 Space Odyssey. Um, Everything is its own reward, which is like a book about sketching, a bunch of James Gurney books, just like loads of arty books like that. And uh, I have not had time literally in like 12 months to actually sit down and read one yet. Luckily, some of them were just picture books, so I managed to get the most out of those. But yeah, I need to, uh, I need a holiday. Let's curve to mesh. We're going to grab just a curve line again. Um, this time we're going to go in the X direction so that we get a bit of length to it. Let's go in the... Ah, I just prefer doing stuff in the X, Y plane. So let's look in the Z axis. Um, there we go. Uh, we're going to go point 0.3 and minus Point three, there we go. We can resample this first curve, resample. And we can set the curve radius. Again, just with a float curve. And the curve factor. And now we can basically control the shape. So start a little bit wider, come around come back. I can't recurve, I can't go like beyond zero, but it's probably all right for what we want here. No one's really going to be scrutinizing this. There is a book for 2001, let me get it.
it's a it's a really cool book actually let me just flip over here so it's a big book i think it used to have a sleeve but i um <laughs> i might have misplaced that uh, or maybe it was second hand actually let's try and find some cool stuff in here yeah there's just like loads of these really great illustrations yeah the movie is amazing if you haven't seen 2001 a space odyssey just go and watch it and watch the full length version like it's worth it's worth the experience there's this really amazing really long cut that's like i don't know, like seven or eight minutes of just like looking into the expanse it's marvelous it's such a good film it's such a good film um but looking at their like what the set design in this book is just so interesting so many of the little details and things that you would miss um I'm trying to find they've, they've got some pictures of the sets and illustrations of the sets i mean these are so cool because you just know that these are like painted with gouache as well and watercolor and stuff like that so it's just very very cool and the uh, the airbrushing as well it's all like traditional airbrushing i think more people should draw traditionally it just you end up with such better ideas and you get a sense of like like you know that this was drawn I don't know if I can really show that, but like these are real pencil sketches and you can you can tell that the curvature is like hand drawn, you know, like it, it's a human that made these marks because it like follows the flow of a person's hand. Um, it's so cool. There's so much stuff written in this book, which I just really need to get into. It's so great. Oh, I won't spoil it all for you. Just buy this book. Buy this book. The 2001 file. It's great. I should do the monolith with geometry nodes. The monolith, isn't that quite a... Let's have a look here. 2001 monolith. I think we could probably do this with geonodes. Is it just square? It is. It's just, you can do it with a cube. <laughs> oh, man. Read, like, seeing all these pictures and looking at that book definitely makes me want to go and re watch the film again another film you should watch uh, is paprika paprika so great 2006 film it is an anime but even if you're not an anime person you should watch it and if you are an anime person you might also not like it so it's just such an interesting it's such an interesting film I definitely recommend it. It's like a dream. A story is about a dream terrorist. There you go. So just like such an interesting premise for a film. Very creative. Have I seen Mobius's artwork? Yes, I did. I think I've got a Mobius book somewhere. There's a few artists that did a lot of illustration like Mobius. I wonder if I do. not at hand but yeah paprika reference to many movies yeah honestly go and watch paprika i really want to watch paprika again i feel like that's something that i would enjoy to watch pe with people i wonder if it's possible to do like a watch party without it just me being like illegally distributing a film <laughs> um let's see what i can do with this his books are so expensive online. They are worth it though. You mean Mobius? They're not awful. 20, 30 quid. I mean, it's like book price, right? It's when you get like an art book, like something by Kim Yong gi or something like that. And it's like a hundred pounds for the book. And it's beautiful for sure, but 
I mean, that's steep. That is steep. What am I doing with this? I need to give this a little bit more resolution. Let's um, check our wireframe. Because I want this to look like it's curved. It's all hundred dollars here, yeah. So not quite that much topology. Go a little bit less. Something around there is fine. Something around there is fine. And now we can try and cast this to a sphere. Um, but we need to move it. So right now it will all just pin itself to this edge of the sphere in a line. Uh, in fact, I can show that set position, position, and we're just going to normalize the position. So every point gets set with a length of one, and that pushes it to the edge. Um. <laughs> printed on a mouse mat. And these you get to see it every day. They are gorgeous. There's a, there's a few Instagram artists I follow who do work very much like him. And uh, oh, it's just gorgeous. So if we move this down, suddenly you can see we're like pushing this onto a different part of the sphere. You walk in there and lose $170. Yeah. Uh, I bought one, um, well actually I didn't buy it, I got it for my birthday, let me grab it. I may have talked about this one on stream before, but uh, it's just such a great book, Decade. And this is like clearly a small book, but it was also like pretty expensive. And the contents of it, I love it so much. Like as somebody who draws, I think, I don't know if it makes it like more interesting to see other people's drawings, but it's just so gorgeous. Oh my God, the work in here is stunning. And the, the fact that these are sketchbook, sorry, sketchbook pages is just nuts. Like this hasn't been composited for the book. The, this is just how they draw. They just draw like this. That's like how they work. They're just incredible. Their character work and their um ah oh, yeah man, it's just gorgeous. It's so nice. So I recommend this one as well. Uh, Evan Mel Amundsen, if that's how you pronounce that. Forbidden Planet in London. I've actually never been. Maybe I should hop in. Man, you just get lost in this guy's drawings. Gorgeous. I gotta start drawing again. Alright, let me get back to this. Does anybody in chat know Milo Manara? That is not a name I know. Whoa. They do some crazy work. Were they a comic book artist? Oh yeah, cartoonist. Wow. I won't share it on camera because a lot of it is uh, erotic, but definitely check them out. They're cool. <laughs> oh yes. Um, hey Leo, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> looking fresh, thanks. It's great, I've reached a, an age where I'm like, I don't know, or like, I guess like a beard to density, like a maturity, that I can actually go and get it, like, just trimmed by somebody else. Which saves me so much, like, stress. <laughs> Alright, so we've got this cast onto a curve, onto a sphere, by just normalising it, and then I'm going to move it back up. It's gone down basically a meter, so we're going to come back up a meter. There you go. Next thing for us to do is going to be um, 
make a bunch of these. Let's just maybe give them thickness. So let's extrude and then we will radially, radially array them. Not individually, not very far. Subdivide. Surface, there we go. Oh, <laughs> lol, I always forget this when I'm doing books. Uh, so I'm just, uh, yeah, I basically, I just cast the shape. Oh, we've done the extrusion and we've lost the bottom. So they've really got to fix that. It needs to be a little bit smarter how they use the extrude. So let's grab a flip. Join these together. And then subdivide. But we also need a merge. By distance, there we go. <laughs> Thanks. The herringbone tutorial. I need to do like a Unity herringbone tutorial now. That would actually probably be a great way to learn Unity. Um, this thing is looking kind of weird. It is just because it's... Uh, oh, do you know what? Maybe we should put some noise on it. Maybe that would help. And we can actually just plug it in. We've already got a set position, so let's just plug it in here. Um, noise texture. Which we can just subtract. 0.5 scale something low and then we'll use this for the offset something around here there we go just to make it a little bit less regular cool um transform subdivision Radial array. Array. Radial, there we go. Radius should be little. Are we just going to overlap them? Do you know what? Maybe that actually looks good. Uh, Happy little mistake, or a <laughs> happy little accident. Um, I want to rotate these. Oh, that's because it's happening. The order of operations is so weird with these. Uh, let's bring this one out here. Reset and rotate in the y axis. There we go. Just add a little icosphere to the middle. That's going to give us our kind of central section. Mesh primitive, icosphere, join, radius down. Two, there we go. A flower. Now we can array these just with everything else. No oh man, that was a long way to make a flower, wasn't it? Uh, what is this? Oh, this is the edge of the balcony. Control J, balcony edge. And this one's going to be our flower, which we will frame after we've arrayed it. Wow, do we have enough points there? Is that crazy? Uh, so the array, let's just join that up to begin with. Uh, we need to scale it down as well. Transform, just so many transforms and scales and things like that. There are better ways to do things. Maybe not doing everything procedurally <laughs> would help. Let's grab a linear array. And we're going the Y direction. Something like that will be fine. We 
Let me allow, uh, rotating the Y axis 90 degrees. And then <laughs> Marine Throne Room would be so much simpler. But where's the fun in that? Where's the fun in making things easy? <laughs> Especially the icosphere. Got to do the icosphere without without using an icosphere primitive. I love that that's like the takeaway that they made, that that AI made for that, um, what the weekly challenges are. And it's like that tweet was nothing even to do with weekly challenges. So funny, right. Let's bring this back a little bit. Let's bring it up a little bit, point, uh, minus one point two, no. Okay, a little bit there. Alrighty. So I might want to change that once we've got it in place. Let's turn off the wireframe. Let's see how it mirrors. Ooh, got some uh, got some gaps in the middle there. Seven five. I'll take it. All right. What a ridiculous project. Control J, flowers. And the next part is going to be this, like, it's like a little bit. So we've got the, oh, what was it called? Oh, the impost. Um, to give us a little bit of a ledge here, we need to add that. And then we need this kind of shape here. Maybe I could actually do that with a Bezier segment. That might be a good excuse for that. And then just the same as we did the other, um, the, the big arch, basically. I mean, this is going kind of well, considering how ridiculous the project is, the idea to do this like manually, but also procedurally. Uh, with the, I think, so the reason that I'm doing the Marine, that I'm not doing the Marine throne room is because it would have been the same like manual procedural process where it's like every part is its own thing and then you're like manually positioning. Um, but also it wasn't like decorative in the same way that a cathedral can be, especially these like big Gothic ones. Uh, right then, so yes, you'll be able to catch up on this. I mean, you can even now like click back to the beginning, KD. Um, although I guess the live is more fun. So I want to just move these back, trying to keep things somewhat organized. Um, the first one, this main arch is basically what we're building up, but at a different scale. So I'm just going to duplicate this whole frame, bring it down to the bottom. And Needs to be a little bit different. So instead of extruding different parts down, so I don't need that extrude. And if I'm not doing the extrusion, I don't need that one. And if I'm not doing this, uh, then I can get rid of that curve line. I don't need the bend because I'm not ending anything. I'm going to actually be shaping this with a Bezier segment instead. Oops. Like so. All right. And the start point can be zero, 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 zero. And then we're going to go up 
add a little bit, and then the end point is going to be, and basically do that. End point is going to be two zero four, and this one is going to be sorry zero four two. Um, Oh, I see what I'm doing. Something like this. That'll do us. And it just needs to be scaled down a little bit. So set curve radius. And we'll scale this in a little bit. Something like that. How do you speak for so long? Seriously, I was trying to make a video of it. <laughs> you get used to it. When I used to do this um, like a year ago, I absolutely could not. Uh, I think your throat just gets stronger because before I did this, I was really not, well, like even now I'm not very talkative. I don't really speak with people. Um, I think if I'm comfortable, I do just chat my head off. So it depends on my, uh, on my situation. But yeah, if, I definitely was not, like in the beginning, I was not able to talk for like long durations. Having, being hydrated makes a huge difference though. So make sure you're hydrated. You're also somewhere that's a bit warmer than I am. So, I mean, I'm just wearing like a flannel and a shirt to even stay reasonably warm here. Oh God. Uh, all right. So this is working adequately. I will accept this and we will position it. Against everything else. So let's come down in the Z. <laughs> it's a desert, literally. And we will also pull this one back. Something like that. Ah, oh, should this be decorated as well? I mean, yes, but also no, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to, I've got to draw a line somewhere. Oh, but it is a pretty big expanse. All right, let's see how it looks like in place. And mirrored. Oh, do you know, I think it comes down to though. Anyway, <laughs> I think I'll finish tonight. I sure hope so. Uh, let's, let's turn on everything. Yeah, even the mouse house stuff, so much stuff was just like totally throw away. Uh, this needs to come up. Man, this array and mirror is slow as hell. Let's turn them off. To be about here, I need that bezier to be a little bit higher. And also the beginning point to be a little bit higher. And uh, further in. No, no, it's fine. Uh, you should go to Old Town or King's Landing. King's Landing would be cool because uh, I actually had a phone call with the studio who made. I'm pretty sure they made King's Landing. Um, oh God, what were they called? Uh, I can remember the guy's name. Oh yeah, it was Render Imagination. I'm pretty sure they did it. Render Imagination. Come on. Let's 
So when I went on their website last time, they definitely had a lot of... Uh... Oh, this website is tanking my internet. They had a lot of stuff about Game of Thrones. It is not a very well optimized website, come on. I'm pretty sure this is a carousel. Hmm. I'm pretty sure they did King's Landing. Maybe they didn't. I'm pretty sure it was them though. They need to uh, they need to compress their website a little bit better their images, um, yeah. But uh, I, they definitely didn't use Blender to do it, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, they used Houdini. Um, set, there we go. That's a bit more palatable as a space to work in. Let's, uh, let's erase some of these annotations as we're going. Yeah, so I think there should be a little bit of an additional something in here. Grr. Maybe we just leave it for now. Or, you know what, we could maybe just pick these faces and insert them. Or just, you know, just like literally have a shape in here. This... What? Oh, right. <laughs> Turn that off. So if I take the... Oh, and then it's being scaled down. I wonder if I can take it from like here. And then it's just that section. Maybe we can grab, <laughs> thanks Amelia. I never really know what I'm doing. I just we just wing it as we come along. How did I come up with the project idea? Well, uh, the marine throne room was rec was requested, and I thought churches would be more fun. And then the picture I ended up working from was the Notre Dame, and <laughs> now we're here. <laughs> like, really should have done a bit more planning. I just haven't had time to really like sit down and work through anything. So you're kind of seeing me just work stuff out on the fly here. It's all good fun. Right, uh, so I think what I should maybe do, so this is the lower arch. Is at this extrude mesh. And the set position, I should just duplicate these. And the only bit I'm interested in keeping is actually the side faces. Uh, so delete geometry. We're going to plug in the side, but we want everything except from. So let's go not. And we can plug that in there. So now we've just got the side faces. Uh, we can set this to face. It makes no difference. Uh, we can also delete these lower sections. Do we have a curve factor? No, so we'll just do it by Z position. Um, so we're gonna use another one of these. We could do or, because we're doing either or for our mask. And this one is gonna be where the position, separate X, Y, Z is less than 
this, there we go. And we can just get rid of some of these and this, uh, not that, in the y-axis. There we go, I'll go a little bit bigger. Oh, I feel like these end ones should be cropped in as well. So every point, uh, every, <clears throat> every point to the like greater than 2.5 y should be at 2.5. We should clamp the positions, uh, which we can do. Actually, we can use a minimum node like so, and let's just set these to all be like five so it doesn't change anything but then the y let's reduce this until we start cropping it in oh no this one's masked already um so not on that one we need this one to be after making a right old mess here so position minimum into the position go to that there we go so now we're clamping in that right hand end Clamping in the left hand end and this whole edge needs to be moved left as well. Let's mute that for a sec. Let's find, let's just get rid of that in general. Let's find the, the top is going to be the other side. So what I'm actually interested in is where it's not the top. Let's make some more space. I just need this to be way more spaced out. So we've got our first supposition, we've got our second supposition, which is not the top. The first one is the top. So this one comes back like so. And then we can also use one of these. To crop the position. Something like that should be fine. And then I can also now delete the top faces and the bottom faces. So we've got rid of the bottom ones here. And to do this, we could do a less than and a greater than or we could do an equals. Let's just do less than and greater than so that it's easier for us to think about. Less than, greater than, and we'll take something like that. Great. And we'll just extrude the mesh. All of the faces, not individually, and scale down a little bit. And then this can just join in. And be moved. Somewhere totally different. Uh, maybe instead of doing that, we join it there. All right, so we can still remove a bit off the top. Hey, GM. No worries. Yeah, we. I mean, we're only three hours in, so we've got at least another three hours. Actually, I really hope. <laughs> I hope it's not. I hope it's like another hour or two at most. Let's see where we're going with this once it's all pieced together. Definitely need to take a bit more of the top there. And I want to move everything left a little bit more as well. So we've got a bit more space. Uh, let's come up a little bit more at the bottom something like that and down a little bit more at the top just to create a bit of infill something like that is good and yeah that's basically fine actually uh mirror it make sure it's all looking good array it make sure it's all looking good and there we go so now i need the uh oh, i keep forgetting the name of it the impost or the abacus um, we'll chuck those in. We need to do our like weird internal roof structure thing. 
this thing and we need to do our top arches uh, and we need two imposts and then do you know I might just do one like really long run of this and maybe we bend it in the middle yeah might be cool to like have it run back on itself um, in which case I would only actually need one half of these yeah all right let's do that um, cool so this one control J this is our lower arch and then imposts so what does an impost actually look like oh they're really floral um we could do i don't really want to do anything too floral i think i just want to do a kind of conical thing like we did at the top of the oh but actually you know it follows the profile of the columns which we've made especially complicated so I think I actually need to do this based on the column here we go our main arch Got our profile here right um, curve line Curve to mesh. Just use that capture attribute there. Save. And these will obviously need moving as well. Uh, what are we going to do? So we can transform by the same amount which is going to start us off good and then oh wait, curve direction let's just do do that there we go uh, and now we can set our curve radius based again float curve off the factor something like this we can also map range the output to make sure it goes from something reasonable to something else reasonable such as one to two maybe or oh, sorry zero to one means one to two just to make sure that we're able to get bigger this is going to get joined on with everything else so now the question is can we make it look like an impost uh, resample set this up a little bit higher and we need to come out a few times I think something like this and then it needs to go back in as well Now, if the reason for these or the purpose for these was to position scaffolding during the build process, then they do need to have a flat top as well. So we'll just make sure they've got one. Let's bring that up a little bit. Something like this. Maybe the lower section can also come out a little bit. Maybe it has a little notch at the bottom. And therefore maybe we set this a little bit higher. A bit more resolution. Add another float. Oh, rounded another point. And there we go. 
Cool, that will do me for my imposts, I think. Let's maybe reduce this a little bit. And now we can position accordingly. So we need one up. <laughs> Suzanne. Oh yeah, we were gonna put Suzanne's everywhere. Um, how? Maybe we should have put Suzanne's instead of flowers. Or maybe we can like line this with Suzanne's because we've already got this curve so I can just put Suzanne's all the way around. Excellent. Let's grab a transform. Also, hi. <laughs> I was going to try and say your name. I don't think I can pronounce it. Let's move this one up a little bit. Oh, it needs to be bigger. God damn. Let's make it a bit shorter. Make it a bit bigger. It just needs to absorb the bottom of that arch. Move it up a bit further. How does that? How tedious. Um, I'm working on a mesh for my ARC project, like the Bird's Nest Stadium in Beijing, and I tried to follow your old geometry nose tutorial with the silver wires. Which ones? Uh, which tutorial was that? Have I done with wires? I don't mean the rope bridge, do you? I feel like I have to look at my <laughs> to look at my channel. Um, yeah, which one? Oh, do you mean the spirograph? The spirograph video. I do mean to. I do need to do uh, to redo the spirograph thing. Um, there's a lot that you can do with that kind of maths, and there's actually a really simple way of redoing it as well, because you can like actually just use circles and basically add the positions together directly, um, rather than needing to do lots of excessive fancy stuff. Um, I need basically another one of these for the bottom. Um, <laughs> Bavik. It's just simple. It's just simple nodes. Simple nodes. Maybe I should make this bit a bit wider. Actually, it had silver plates with rotations. Do you remember the title of the video? It might not have been me, or I might just have a really bad memory. Uh, Where's our balcony? Oh yeah, I think you do mean um, the spirograph video. I mean, okay, so what you can do, uh, but it got stuck when you played with displacement. Um, you probably either need to turn on adaptive displacement, adaptive subdivision, or you need to turn on displacement in your shader options. Or you need to make sure that you're in cycles because you can't displace in EV. Um, yeah, so if you're talking about the spirograph one, which I think you are, what you can actually do, uh, let me just turn off annotations. Oh, here we go. Uh, you can use curve line, and we were using the index before. Um, is there a better way to do it? Um, I mean, you can use the curve factor. That would at least give you a zero to one, just like immediately. So we've got the curve. Uh, we're going to use set position. 
And this is all going to be based on the curve. Uh, let's just go with factor. Spline factor is what it's called at the moment, but it's not going to stay called that. Uh, combine x, y, z is what we need. And if you plug in your spline factor through a math node sine and another math node cosine into the y-axis. Hey, John, how's it going? Uh, make sure your curve line is also resampled a decent amount. And then there you go, you've got a circle. You can add more versions of this. So if I just duplicate this and then use a vector math add, but I have it like some number of times multiplied, then you can see that you're getting the spirograph real quick using. So this is basically how you do the maths. It's the same maths, but we're just using math nodes and plug it into the set position. I'm fairly sure this is how we made it before. Uh, the alternative way is going to be easier for you because it's easier. Uh, so you can just use a mesh circle. Um, and what you got to do is you need to add another mesh circle to it. And to add these together, we need to transfer. So attribute, transfer attribute. This is the source. We're going by index. It's the vector position. There we go. And we can just use this as an offset, right? So great. Right now we've just doubled it. But what happens if we have uh, like fewer points? What if we had, let's say, 10 on our smaller one and 30 on our bigger one? Well, that's <laughs> not behaving correctly. But we should be able to uh, modulate our index by Wow, this is cool. How did we make these shapes? Oh wait, I'm still mirroring. This is half, half the problem. Um, so yeah, basically without modulating, you can't say, wait, if I just set this to integer, that's going to be the same into the modulo. Uh, let's set this to 10 and then let's do some multiple of this for our overall one. Here we go. Let's maybe go with six and we can set our radiuses on here. There you go. So it's a little bit easier because it's fewer maths. Um, it's fewer maths. It's less maths, but you just need to think of it like, okay, well, I'm basically just adding a circle to a circle and every time you want to do this you can do it this way or you know you could do this with a curved circle just the same um, mesh circle is easier because we're doing the transfer um, and we can set the vertices here without doing a resample curve so there you have it but you're right I should make a proper tutorial um, because people like that one and I feel like I should probably do it in both ways maths and non-maths John, what did you miss? Well, we're making the Notre Dame, apparently, in geometry nodes. So just a little thing, you know. We like to keep it keep it humble on here. How do I start with 3D maths? Uh, I start with 2D maths. And then you add a D. It's literally that simple. Like if you start with shaders, start making patterns on shaders with a plane, like just literally grab a plane and you can start making shapes like squares and circles and hearts. I have a tutorial on that. And uh, and then you can just build up basically. Uh, yeah. So what was I doing? I was going to add a little bit more width to my balcony because I don't think it actually touches. It does not. Balcony edge. I think it is this one. And we are scaling it in the Y. Oh, I see. I understand. I need to move it in the Y. So scaling away from zero and it's disappearing into our bisected mirror. 
I need to start naming stuff properly as well. What's this? <laughs> Not just Suzanne. Uh, this is our handrail base, I think. And this one is, this one's our balustrade. If that's what you call it. And then, um, yeah, balcony edge is in here. Cool, yeah. Let's make sure it comes back a bit in the y axis there. Okay, that's going to be a problem. I need to get it close without actually pushing off the edge. Mm, great performance. Minus point 0.1. Can you give some tips and tricks to understand geometry as to a beginner? Definitely start with easier stuff. Don't uh, don't try and jump into like super complex, heavy going stuff. Just think of it as like a series of operations like you would normally model. I mean, essentially when I'm working like this, I am just essentially doing that. I'm not building a tool here that generates cathedrals. I'm generating a system which generates this cathedral because it's a very specific series of operations that I'm actually going through. But that's actually quite a good way to learn it because Oh, there we go. Um, because you're able to pick things up pretty straightforward. It's like do this thing and then move it and extrude it and delete some parts of it and move it again. And then you can just start adding stuff to your arsenal, like all of this stuff that I've done with the curves and the offset curves and the float curve stuff. You don't need to know how to do that at the beginning. And to be honest, I'm only doing it because I want to do everything in geometry nodes and a lot of this stuff is easier to do in just like traditional modeling. So don't feel like you have to just because you see like morons like me trying to make everything into a node. Let's grab another one of these transforms. I'm going to stick in it, stick it up at the top where we want another one of these. I'm going to go up to here. And I want another one, which is going to be our, like, low one. There should be a, a much lower one, somewhere down here at about a meter. Um, I kind of want to scale it down, but maybe I don't. So maybe we're not going to use that actually for the bottom one. Um, well, we've got our main arch is here extruded, but maybe I should extrude it twice actually. So right now we are extruding down to minus eight, uh, but if I go down to minus seven, And then extrude again. The top of that extrusion, which is just the bottom, um, with another vector. Minus one, there we go. So now I have this horizontal cut. I can actually do something a bit better. Um, I need to basically move all of these edges away from the center of this. Uh, flip it. <laughs> I think it doesn't want to be like super wide at the bottom. I mean, maybe I will add it again at the bottom, but I think I just want to like step this out to begin with. Um, I think if this actually like came out at the bottom, that would just be a trip hazard. Although I can't see any actual pictures of the base. Oh, and it's all going to be behind pews. Are we going to add pews? No. 
think that's going too far for today. Uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger. In fact, yeah, you're right. Let's just do it this way. Minus eight. We'll just spin it upside down like you said. and then move it up oh and it's already a meter <laughs> it's like exactly the height we need it okay <laughs> starting a cult uh, what am I listening to with headphones um, I get feedback from my mic into my ears and also I get really anxious if I just talk without headphones because I feel like people can hear me, but like when I also hear myself back, I don't get stressed. <laughs> it's like, a, you know, like cow squeezes to help cows not feel so stressed. It's like that. It's like a cow squeezer for my head. Uh, but no, I'm not listening to music. That would be a little bit too distracting for me, I think. Control J. These are our... Uh, what are they called? Imposts. There we go. Uh, have I done all this today? Yes, I have, yeah. I mean, it's only like, it's basically all the same process the whole way through. You can see all of these float curves. I am literally just duplicating my nodes. Uh, and it's all being designed to be able to be just mirrored, so... All right, last or like penultimate-ish section. Um, let's grab a little way of doing arches, which we fortunately have. Oh, but we don't have the mirrored. I could really do the mirror and bisect node. That would be super helpful. Alongside loops. Um, isn't there a noticeable dis delay? No, no, because uh, my, so this is a, my microphone is like, um, it's not a software feedback. It's going via an XL, XLR microphone, like into an audio interface. And then I'm getting feedback directly back from the audio interface. So it's like immediate. Um, although the software feedback is generally pretty good these days. Uh, if you do need, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, direct monitoring, apparently. Okay. Maybe those imposts are a little bit too, like, big at the ends. Oh, but we do have to hold. Uh, that is a bit of an issue. I don't really want them all to be quite so big. That looks a bit better. But then this sticks out. Maybe I should just push it in to the uh, to the side there. Where is this? Our lower arch. It should come down a tiny bit. Minus point oh five. Yeah, that's pretty good. That'll do. Uh, so yeah. What's the next thing we were doing? The top arches. With the feedback, it also keeps you from being too loud. Oh yeah. I think, um, I just, I'm not a shouty person in, like, in general anyway, but I definitely hear, like if I do stuff with my cup, I can like hear the bass coming back through my headphones. Um, and yeah. Like, as I get more tired, I whisper a bit more and more. <laughs> Just because I'm, like, feeling more relaxed and I want to, like, sleep, I guess. Oh, 
All right. How are we going to get these three arches without having a bisect? I could do it like the banister, but it's on a bit of a bigger scale. And <laughs> your radio voice. I wish I could like make my voice deeper and just um, like I was a whiskey drinker or like I smoke cigars or something just to like woo people with my voice. <laughs> An auto tune. <laughs> so I need, I think, to maybe, ah, oh, I don't, I think this is a bad idea, but if I had a plane in which I had controlled some of the points to basically do this. Right, so basically pinch at the top and then we've got all of our points along it. Uh, and then you can like extrude this in and then you've got yourself a little, a little chamfer all the way around. And I can just extrude it back. I mean, it's gonna be so high up. So I'm not really sure that we need such high fidelity. And at least this is a little bit of a different process rather than the same thing that we've done a hundred times. So let's just grab a grid and we'll start there. Uh, we're looking for around about two by two by one, I think a little bit over two. Uh, well, let's just start with two by one and we can transform. Hey, Philip, how's it going? And we're going to rotate this on the y-axis 90 degrees. There we go. And I am going to turn on my wireframe again so I can see what's going on. All right. In fact, we only need to make half of it, which saves us some time. Um, because Oh wait, I need to turn off mirroring. Um, because uh, we can just stick them together. Uh, like ASMR, yeah. Uh, so I need to basically pull all of these ones back. Oh, do you know what? With a float curve, it's just constant. <laughs> Let's grab a, I need a way to identify these as well. Um, which I'm, do you know, I'm just going to use one of my toolkit nodes because I don't use them enough. Can be using the inside. Let's check our preview box here. I'm going to go slightly over to one side. Actually, do you know what? Maybe we can just move this back. Minus 0.25, there we go. And come a little bit narrower, a little bit more in the Z, and a little bit down. Something like that, there we go. So I don't need that preview anymore. Now, how do I fast forward to the result? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so slow. I need to speed up. Um, so I need a minus Y transform, so combine X, Y, Z. Which is going to be uh, quite a small amount, so let's do a map range so I can actually use my full float curve. That's what I'm drinking. I just have like, like a whole liter of vodka. Uh, float. Oh, come on. Oh. I swear sometimes my keyboard is just not working. There we go. It's back. I changed the batteries the other day, so it's definitely not batteries. Um. Hmm. If you speed up, some of us will get left behind. Don't worry, I don't think... It's one of those things as well, you know, like when you're running, or, well, I don't know, but when you're running and it's like, okay, I've been, like, just messing around and now I'm going to try 100% and you speed up, like, 2%, you just absolutely exhaust yourself to, to do almost nothing. 
It's the same like when you're cycling or if you're driving and you catch up to a cyclist and it's, you're like waiting to go around them and they'll just like suddenly stand up and start like pedaling as hard as they can. And I mean, you're in a car, it like makes no difference to you whether or not they're sprinting or not. Just, uh, just not great. So what am I actually doing here? Oh, right, so I need to control it by the z-axis. So again, I need a map range. And um, we're going to be taking the z of separate x, y, z. And the position, there we go. So we are apparently going from positive point eight ish oh no positive point eight down to minus one doesn't vodka actually look identical to water it's certainly not particularly distinguishable uh, we can go to a maximum of minus point two five maybe Oh wait, are we? Yeah, minus 0.4. There we go, great. Let's pull this in at the top because we want our arch shape. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? Maybe give us a few more points. There we go. Uh, <laughs> let's mirror this now. Uh, oh, do we want to? I think I didn't want to do the bottom one. Can I just extrude it down and then extrude across? Yeah, let's do that. Save myself having some weird angles along the bottom. Um, oh, creaky wrists. So extrude mesh. I only want to be extruding an edge. I need to preview the output from this. Um, this time we're going down somewhere like this. Just a little bit across the bottom. Let's grab a vector going in the positive. A little bit. Oh wait, no, I need to make sure I'm <laughs> not doing both of those. Uh, so reducing the Y, there we go. Cool. Point four should be about right. And then we can Transform. Let's get rid of that preview. Uh, vector, yeah. And uh, we're going to go and flip it in the y axis, minus one. Do we have flipped normals? We do. So make sure you're also flipping your normals. And we want to merge by distance. There we go. Groovy. Mm. I want to take all of the inside faces. Which I'll just do with, um, I just go a little bit deeper over here, minus point four. And again, this one point four five, and then this one wants to come across. There we go. Um, oh, Julia's making dinner on the fire outside. God damn! You having a barbecue, or just like a straight fire? <laughs> we had a fire. We had a, a barbecue a few days ago. It was like the first barbecue of the year. We barely had any last year, actually. Need to uh, need to get more into barbecues. Like barbecued halloumi, 
So damn good. Is this overlapping? I believe it might be. That's all right, okay. Um, yeah, so I need to select these internal faces and then extrude them all. I'm getting some weird, some weirdness there. Okay. So extrude. Mm, Find video selling that. That's what you want. We're taking our edges, we're only taking the internal edges with a selection inside the selection. Let's set these back to zero. And procedural uh let's grab a vector node here as well oh i kind of want to scale it in which we can do with the scale elements so that's all right we're going to be going back in the y direction okay up in the z that's too much i think i'm going to need to do double mask on this just to make sure it's only picking ones which are also uh, boundaries. And you can do this. So utility, Boolean math, and because we're doing two masks and we want where they're both concurrently true. And on here we can do where the face, no, the edge, neighbors, face count equals one. So you only have one face next to an edge, which is a boundary. Not sure what's going on at the bottom. Am I too worried? Not really. confusing that he's picking these faces at all um, that definitely shouldn't be happening but we can maybe come in a little bit narrower here um, what's our wireframe look like yeah there's definitely some stuff going on there Isn't this working at the bottom? Um, you'd have to do something like merge. Well, I am, uh, I am merging here. I'm just not sure why it's deciding to. I don't know where it's getting additional. Hang on, wait, let me just duplicate this object. And we will apply. Oops. Uh, I'm just going to apply this one and let's have a look at the geometry. How strange. I wonder if I think it might be my selection area for the extrusion. This one, and this one. Thanks. Uh, am I able to talk about the role at the moment? Uh, so, well, I haven't started yet. I start on Monday the 4th. And I'm not sure what I'm allowed to talk about. And I'm also not sure what it is I'm doing. <laughs> like, I'm not... A, I'm, I have some ideas. But I'm definitely not, like, 100% sure. So, I will definitely talk about it as soon as I'm... As soon as I know what I can say and as soon as I know what I'm allowed to say. Oh wait, that was the same. As soon as I know what I can say and as soon as I know what I'm actually doing. Um, yeah, the job role listing, like the application form. Um, I mean, that was public, so I'm assuming I'm allowed to talk about that. 
it basically was just wanting people who had like a good head for proceduralism and for like generating assets and things like that so my like official job role is senior procedural artist but the kind of like the family of jobs is like just 3d artist or senior senior 3d artist um so yeah so it's a basically just a senior 3d art role and i'll be having to make assets <laughs> I didn't, that probably sounds cryptic, but it, it, a lot of it is that I actually don't 100% know. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for it though. It should be a, it should be a blast. Senior, I know. I should just say 3D artist. It's just because it's like so nuts to me that I'm a senior 3D artist. Like, really, I'm still a child. So I don't know. It just seems weird. Like I know I'm not. Am I going to be using Blender? Yes, it's primarily Blender that I will be using, but my the expectation is that I will be learning uh, C Sharp and Unity so that I can become more useful in time. I think they employed me with the, the goal of me sort of growing with the role. So uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm stoked to have a, uh, like a job you know, like a seat where stuff like money comes. <laughs> like with freelancing, freelancing is great, but like the hustle does wear you out a little bit. Um, what am I looking for? Scale elements. And as much as I was always like, oh yeah, you know, I get to spend so much time doing my own projects because I'm my own boss. And it's just like, no, you find what makes money and then you do all of that. So. Uh, title based on skill it was funny when they were asking like so they said how long have you been using blender um and i said and they were like oh well that definitely qualifies you for being senior and it's like yeah but i started when i was literally a child like i was literally a child i was i don't know 13 or 14 or 13 um so to me like those years don't count in my head like, it's cool that they do technically count, but definitely, like, if you're a young person and you're looking at learning a bit of 3D software, just be aware that n learning it while you're young can make your whole life so much simpler. Like, it is definitely worth just, like, sitting down, learn, um, like, learn Photoshop, learn Maya, learn Blender. So, yeah, I don't know spend the time to learn stuff so we're scaling these edges um just the top of this here and specifically oh man i hate the scale elements node it's such a weirdly designed node why not just instead of having like a center and an axis why not just have like a a vector and a uh like a um a vector and a magnitude like a scale and a vector rather than having it by axis that was like a weird decision okay yeah well i went to university to study animation Jose and uh I that basically killed it for me <laughs> like I've made my way back to it eventually but university was just that made me think like oh this isn't for me this isn't something that I can see myself doing this isn't a career path that's like viable but now I'm a bit older and it's like oh damn you know I could have stuck at that and made like some really decent progress if I'd stayed it when I was that age. But you find your way back to the things which are, which kind of matter to you. So I don't think it really matters in the end of the day. So shade smooth. There we go. Oh, is this auto smooth doesn't work if you don't have the original mesh. Well, 
that's fine. Just joined. Am I using reference pictures for this? I have a reference picture of the Notre Dame, uh, and I'm just sort of approximating it, just so I don't spend way too much time doing this, because it would be very easy to spend the next week doing this, um, and I don't think people would appreciate that. Um, Oh, what's your master's in, Julian? I feel like I know so little about people's academia. I just assume, because everybody I know, I know from 3D. So it's like, I just assume everybody's a 3D artist, kind of like first and foremost. Linear array. Going in the Y direction by one, we're gonna count three. I'm going to, oh, do you know what? Maybe I should actually, no, oh, no, that was probably fine. And um, we can just add another one on top. Join these two together, move this one up to start minus one. There we go, that's a bit better. Um, this one I should probably extrude the edges of. Geno's toolkit is a lifesaver. Oh, thank you. I'm glad it's very, I'm glad it's uh, useful. I use it a lot. <laughs> I find as well, like the only reason I made it was because I was using these things all the time and people were just like not able to do it because like there's so many, like a, a, an array, like a linear array it's like, oh, okay, add the line node and then we add the instance on points and then like realizing the pieces and all of that. It's like, oh, you should just have a node that does that for you. Get some useful controls going. Right, extrude mesh. We're gonna be extruding edges. We are gonna use again, another box selection. I should, do you know, I don't think I have all of my, I need a bunch more selection masks I added one for edge direction. I need to add one for like boundary and edge length controls and I just need to add a whole bunch more masks basically. Super easy to put together though. Um, let's add the box selection. Here we go. Here we go. Preview on join. This one. We can move up in the z-axis. I'm using the outside selection. There we go. And that's pretty close. Um, and we also need to do the same. Oops. The same in here there we go great set the offset scale to zero scale elements in the y-axis by some amount the top of that there we go three nice it's almost like i planned it let's maybe make this a little bit taller just so we're not doing the tops I think you figured out a good cross section node using marching squares. I actually, I was talking about using, I was talking about making a marching cubes node earlier. Did you ever work out a way of doing that? It would definitely be good to learn. Uh, if you're happy for me to add the marching squares, then I would be happy to, I mean, I'd be happy to learn how to do it <laughs> so that I can add it um, if you're happy for me to do that. Oh, JKR, thank you. I'm glad. Let's scale these in a little bit. This is very strange. So 
So we definitely have the edges. Oh, there are 256 different configurations. Oh my God. Uh, so we're scaling these in the x-axis. Oh, because it's doing it as like a... Why? Foolish. All right, well, uh, in that case, what we can do is we can move... Oh yeah, that's really easy. We can move it based on the sign of the y, because one of it is positive, one of it is negative. So we can take our selection here. Um, obviously we can there we go we can move things so we can offset this I'll take the position oh wait no I'll take the combine XYZ oh combine RGB why do they even add that combine XYZ we're interested in the Y axis we're interested in the sign like S-I-G-N separate XYZ we're interested in the Y axis of the position magical how cool is that all right let's um, just go to that realize instances instances realize instances merge by distance I don't know if I've already got one merge by distance yeah definitely Riaz we can uh, we can have a sit down hopefully at the end of this week if you're around anyway um, cool that was a few nodes to do something which looks very simple yeah I know I've already said it in this stream but don't do everything procedurally just because you can it's kind of a waste of time yes combine XYZ and combine RGB should be the same node I agree I don't see any benefit for the for it to not just not be like a vec3 why don't we have vec2 vec3 vec4 nodes and then it's done don't need to worry about the specifics the artist can just choose what they're using it for anyway uh these are my upper arches there we go we will need to position these oh do you know i didn't even need to make all of these because we only need one and a half, but hey, that was a fun learning experience. What is sign? So uh, it literally returns whether something is positive or negative. So if it's positive, you will get plus one. If it is negative, you'll get minus one. And if it's zero, you will get a zero. So if you have, uh, for example, like a gradient, Let's just do a thing like this. Let's pretend this goes through zero. Oh my god, I can't draw. Uh, there we go, close enough. Right, so if this is f of x, let's say that we want to go absolute, and then we would basically have it going like this, right? It would all be positive, but you would have lost the sign. So if you were to multiply this by sign, then you would get it back, basically. All it does is it stores the positive or negativeness of a number. Um, yeah, color to float is the only difference, but there's, I don't see why there isn't just like a luminosity, like why not just add a VAC3 and then also have like a color space conversion node or like a gamma node. I mean, do we have a gamma node? Okay, well in shaders there's a gamma node, which you can just do the same thing with. Oh well. Well, I've made these actually pretty small, but rather than fixing them, let's just stick a plaster on it and just scale them up. There we go, we can move it up to the top somewhere. It's about 10 meters, maybe a little bit higher. I feel like there should probably be some kind of divider. <laughs> no, plus plus has one. Um, uh, do you know what? 
Oh no, they do actually. Damn it. I was going to say they didn't have one in the Notre Dame, but they do. Let's uh, let's just pretend they don't. So we're going to come forwards. Point five. That brings us pretty close. Let's go up a little bit more. And we can put something along the divide if we need to. Let's actually scale this down to like 1.5 maybe. Yeah. I've done so much stuff with really high res and it's just chugging. There we go. I do think it should have the divider actually. Oh well, well it's fine. Let's ignore it for now. Um, what we can do instead is we can start building up our roof section, which is just a curved line like this. And then I think I can just do that with a quadratic bezier. Easy, easy, right. Um, yeah, quadratic bezier. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll use the same roof part in the in here as well. Um, it looks so dramatic for something which is just like so dumb. Let's grab a curved primitive quadratic bezier. I can feel my brain starting to grind to a halt. So my apologies if my speech <laughs> slurs. Bezier. Um, I should probably just do this in position so I actually have a gauge of what it's going to look like. Maybe we'll actually just we'll do it at zero, but then we'll make it look bigger. Hey, Dre's, how's it going? So this all to zero. Uh, we're going to go just straight up, and then the top one should be like one, two, three, four, five meters up. And actually the bottom one should be two and a half-ish meters minus y. Let's go 2.2. .2. Uh, thank you. Let's throw this up on here. Oh, here it is. Uh, this one, did I say five? I think I did. So the middle section should be up. Oh, and also on the left, uh, minus, minus two. Mm. Let's bring this up 10. So much resolution, ridiculous. Uh, what would you recommend to get better at maths in Blender? Shaders. Just play with shaders. Honestly, you can learn so much by just messing around with gradients and seeing what makes what. And really everything's just playing with gradients. So, <laughs> Arto. <laughs> no, just fun to listen. Oh, thank you, Justice. My, moving up to 16. That's too far. Coming in front here. Okay, there we go. Right. So it's a little bit less than minus 2.2. .2. Yeah, that's fine. Then around there. This one should be a little bit higher. And a little bit. Maybe taller in the middle. I'm just eyeballing this as I pretty much always do. There we go. It's probably fine. And then what we can do is uh, we can go to, well, actually it's like minus three. So let's go minus, minus three, three. And this top one, 
should be where should it be? It should basically be diagonal. Alright, so maybe the start should be minus uh, this. So this one should be two point two point eight. There we go. basically the shape. We just need to uh, basically compress this. It's, a, it's kind of a hacky way of working. But super easy. So one gets compressed in the um, the x-axis there. And the other one gets compressed in the y axis and then moved. Move the other way. Wait, is this right? Let me have a look. <laughs> Let me see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, no, that's not right. It needs to go the other way. So. Good progress for three hours. Thank you. Four hours? Yeah. Um, oh, it's really warm in here. My radiator is so hot. Oh, I thought my lights were overheating or something, but it's just the radiator. <laughs> you pay for a template like this. I mean, if this was sensible, I mean, look at it. It's ridiculous. Oh wait, we were going to add Suzanne's. Somebody remind me to add Suzanne's um, as soon as I've worked out how to do this roof. So this one actually needs to go this way and then we got like a horizontal one and then one like this. I think that's right. Am I going to do the outside? No, unfortunately not. We're we just going to do like a single render of the inside. Clay render. I'm not getting into shaders today. That's too much for, m for my little head. So this one needs to go somewhere. <laughs> How does it feel to be God? I wish. I'm like, I'm, I'm just so confused. Most of the time I'm confused. But thank you for the vote of confidence. I wish. Um, I wish I could live up to that. So we need to be starting at zero. Zero. And we're going up to 2.8. Yes. My mouse looks big because I'm using the magnifying glass to make sure that you can see it. It is actually just a huge mouse. Okay, getting closer. Um, we need to move this one back in the y-axis. Minus 2.8, there we go. But we also need to make sure we're not actually pinching at the bottom like this. So I'm going to go back a little bit further. Or am I? I think actually, I'm going to move this one forwards. So minus 2.75. And minus 2.75. So we've got it sideways enough. Have we got it widthways enough? Uh, no, two point here. Oh, is this the top? God damn it. 
at 2.8. So I need to move the bottom, which is the start. Okay, yeah, point. 0.05, just so I've got a nice little corner on there. I've got three curves, good. What can we do with three curves? We can loft them. That's, I mean, that's cool, but not good for what we want. We just want a linear, a linear loft, and we need to fix the order of these. Still not good. It's so close. So, how am I getting this wrong every time? Uh, so I think this one goes in the middle. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just use our heads. Let's start with one. And then we're going to put in the middle one. Okay. And then we're going to go to the edge. Hey, there we go. Here we go. Uh, doing French homework. I uh, I did so bad at French in school. I am just not particularly uh, French talented. Let's go down to how low can we go with this? Can we go to three? Oh, perfect. Nice and sharp. That's what we want. Um. So this is you'll never have French homework again in three months. <laughs> from a nightclub. Okay, let's make this actually like point one. Let's go a little bit further out there. And then each of these curves also separately needs to Oh, it's down here. Um have something pushed along it, but we also need something along this one and this one. Um, which we do for some reason not have. Why are they all, why are they all like this? Uh, maybe I just use the original ones and I'll just literally manually position some curves. That feels bad, but we can just use a uh, curve, sample curve, which now has a field, so I can't actually plug this into a line anymore. <laughs> it's literally English, but instead of pronouncing R, you go R. <laughs> That's not quite right. <laughs> they have all their own vocab. I'm so bad at my French vocab. I feel like German's easier. Um, how is Unity going? I start Unity in eight days? Something like that. Monday after next. <laughs> German. German is not hard. German is just English. It even sounds like English. They just roll some of the words together. Guten Tag. <laughs> right. I just... I was trying to think of like a procedural way to join up the ends. I can't really be bothered. Let's just do it manually. Dutch sounds like English. Dutch sounds like a uh, Welsh person speaking German. That's how Dutch sounds. Hey, Fadi. Let's add some curve lines. Will I keep streaming? Yeah. One of my, um, yeah. They asked me at Unity, they asked me in the interviews, they were like, oh, are you going to keep making content? Are you going to keep streaming? And I was like, yep, literally never going to stop. So I had to do like 
um, had to declare it on my on my contract that I was going to keep doing it. I will need to find out like the logistics of what I can and cannot. But um, when I, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to join up the ends of these curves. I just want to pick this point and join it with a line segment to um, to this one and then to this one. Oh, it would be so easy in Svarchok. But there we go. I just need to select the ends of my curves. I mean, I've got I've got these uh, quadratic Bezier positions, which I can just I can easily join them. It's not like I've got difficult numbers. Unity content, yeah, I really want to try some like high fidelity Unity content because I keep seeing like all of the people like Sakura Rabbit and obviously the new Unity thing with enemies. Um, time zone. Yeah, so uh, I just keep seeing people doing cool stuff. What's the best way to start learning geometry nodes? Start learning geometry nodes. I've got some videos on like beginner stuff, but just generally just start making stuff. Come up with something that you can use it for. That's like really simple, like transforming something or rotating something or animating something or, or you know, try and come up with like a way to make inverse kinematics or something like that. Like if you want to do more of like a maths challenge. Um, yeah. But isn't it quite outdated in light of UE4, 5 and GD4? I would say no, actually. There's a lot of stuff going on at Unity. Your beginner videos are great, but they're already outdated. They're not the fields ones, the Geometry Nodes 101 node. Like, I mean, how outdated, if you, I mean, okay. <laughs> how recent do you need it? Do you need it like that day's release? The basic stuff is like still exactly the same as it was back in November. Like the George Nodes fields, like what are fields, um, capturing attributes, transferring attributes, the Raycast node. I think I did another one, Displace and Scatter. I think there were five. Um, yeah. And it appears to hate KDE. Mm. Could you use a circle in proximity? Oh wait, is that a question to something else? Yeah, I would be surprised if fields changed anything significantly. <laughs> we do all your videos every day. I don't think people realize how long. <laughs> Sorry, no, I wasn't offended. I was just like, um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ask for the beginner ones and it's like, uh, those one one ones. Actually, I do have I think there is an attributes one that's a geometry nose 101. Maybe I should just mute those or like unlist them. I unlisted the rope bridge tutorial because that one was actually out of date. Now, see you later, Andre. Have a good, have a good Sunday. Try and step away from your computer. Okay, so control shift C, I think that's, yep. Yeah. So control shift, sorry, control alt C uh, copies a whole vector. Um, and then I can just paste it and we can go for zero. So that's one of them. And I need another one, which is the opposite way. Oops. Uh, control shift C, control shift V. Oh, that's not quite right. Um, oh, not, sorry, being dumb. Um, five point two eight and two point eight. That was the y axis. I'm being dumb again. Uh, minus two point eight. There we go, minus two point eight. Cool. So now these ones I can just oh do you know what I could have done? I could have just taken the edge loops. Oh well. Um, oh yeah, for the LTS release, if you go from two point nine three to three point three, you're just—it's going to be exactly the same, but like with 
a couple of extra bits for fields because you can still do everything with the like the get i'm saying get set but they're actually called store named attribute for your set and named attribute for your get and you just at the moment you just need to go into experimental turn on and named attribute names nodes and you can grab them there Ah, oh, Wimbledon and Cambridge. Are you going to see the tennis? That's in June, isn't it? Uh, oh man, my back is killing. Uh, you got to be the voice, <laughs> the voice for Unity videos. I think there's a lot of. I mean, there are a lot of Unity creators. I need to get in with the Unity crowd. I'm a uh, I'm very behind. Uh, yes, exactly, Riaz. You're basically killing the node, the, the modifier. It's great. It's so good. You're just escaping a country before you get murdered or something. Oh my god. Which, uh, which country are you in? The world is just a pretty trashy place at the moment, I swear. It's not going well. Point five. Ah, see you later, winners. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we're close. We're close. Oh, damn. Oh, are you in? Are you in South Africa? I know there was like a lot of stuff a couple of years ago. Was it the Durban riots in South Africa? Um, anyway, let's grab a curved mesh. Come on. Um, do you know what? Let's use one of our, let's just, you know, to maintain the, like the theme, the, the voice of the scheme, we can take our same thing, this one, <laughs> and we can plug it in over here. I love that. You'd love to learn it if you're too lazy. You don't have to be not lazy. Like, I think of myself as lazy. Like, I learned proceduralism because I'm lazy. Because, I mean, clearly it's backfired, but the idea of proceduralism, it's like so much of it is about making stuff just really straightforward because you don't have to do the work anymore i think that's what appealed to me about it was like oh you don't really have to do anything in south africa damn yeah there's just like so much going on in the world i mean there's i, I try not to get into like political stuff in general but like obviously there's so much going on with like Ukraine at the moment and then you've got Taiwan with China and then you've got uh, Iran is that what's going is that there's just so like when you live in the UK and like I've lived here for my whole life so I'm just so used to the world being straightforward and like not dangerous <laughs> ridiculous like really hammers home how kind of privileged um you are like just for like it's like a toy cost like which country you're gonna be born into i mean i know that's i know that's not really how it works but like the lack of choosing okay let's make these nice and narrow and on each one of the endpoints we're going to stick a suzanne hmm yeah, when you're a modeler, definitely easier to do. Uh, just, just like traditional workflows. Uh, I miss it when I miss from when join geometries used to automatically sort. Used to be so much better. Sudan, oh yeah, Sudan, that's the one.
Okay, so is this looking like how it should? No, I've not even joined this up, that's why. Oh, and it's still down here. Let's do that. Oh, damn. Damn, play with that sounds like seriously fucked up. There is just there is so much corruption that goes on in the world. I was listening to a like a talk from someone who was growing up like a, it was like a long time ago, like in the fifties, uh, like in New York in the Italian kind of mafia mob area, and how people would just like come into a bar and like shoot somebody in the face it's just like whoa what like that's literally ridiculous that that could even happen crazy <laughs> Fatty. um right i need to mirror this actually for use downstairs in the middle section um that should give me something to work with so loft curves transform I'll use a different transform so I'll use one down here let's reset that let's flip this <laughs> hey spicy join these two together and one of these is going to be flipped in the x-axis well, that's just rotating the Z axis actually. And then move it. No, actually, flipping the X axis is the only way. So minus one. And then we're going to move it in the X axis back just a little bit. I'm going to clip through, but that's fine. No one's going to be looking too close. Uh, Then we can flip. Oh, not all of it. Just the bit that we've actually, you know, actually flipped. There we go. Adequate. And then um, let's grab this one. And we'll join this one in as well. Let's go up in the z-axis. We just need to go slightly above the door. Oh, I need to make sure I'm actually... How did that happen? Um, turn is too high. I need to make sure that I'm beyond the arch, because obviously I don't want any clipping through, because this is supposed to be ceiling. In fact, I might scale this down a little bit in the z-axis, just to make it a little bit closer. Um, yeah, that'll do. And then we're going to go back in the x-axis. No, oh, I don't really want to do windows. Hey, just complete luck it lined up with that um, impost as well. Amazing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the timing stuff. It is just in the node editor overlays, the two circles, and then you can go down to the timings. <laughs> legally got a Mac 1 on the freeway. Yeah, the German autobahns are pretty ridiculous. I think it's nuts that people, like, surely people crash. Surely people crash. I thought Germans were, like, high on safety. Let's grab these. These ones are our ceilings. 
Uh, spicy melon, if you are in Blender 3.0, it is not there. You need to be in 3.1 or higher for that to show up. Let's grab our balcony edge. Let's make sure that we're scooching this back a little bit further. We'll put on a, a wall or something along the back. We need to add some Suzanne's. Let's grab our lower arches. And let's find our Bezier. Extrude mesh, scale elements, merge by distance, trim, extrude mesh. Oh, this isn't lower arches. Oh, they're upper arches. I've been done. Um, lower arches. These ones, resample, set curve radius. That's all fine. And then uh, come into here. Um, and then array, spline. Hey, Space Drifter, how's it going? Oh, I need to add a, uh, I need to add a Suzanne. So it's going to hidden. I can now delete this guide mesh, which I made earlier. And we can add a Suzanne. Save. Hider. So we'll just bring this in. And I will make it colorful so I can find it again. There we go, geometry. And well, the array spline is great and all, but I feel like I need to just make this a bit different. Oh wait, I didn't even need to do that. Let's oops, let's undo that. Let's just rotate afterwards. Instance, rotate instances. We need to rotate them onto their backs. Something like this. Does 3.2 still have issues with connecting nodes? Not that I'm aware of. It does seem to have sorted itself out by now. Going minus 90, zero, 90, that seems to work. We can scale instances down as well. And we can add a few more. And I'll probably also need to transform this to bring it to the correct location along our mesh, along our curve. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I do need to do the uh, procedural Suzanne thing. No, we were talking about it earlier as well. Sexy monkey. Let's, where are we? I actually have no idea where this is. There must be another transform. There is. When will this file be on Patreon? It will be on Patreon this evening. Uh, as soon as we're done with the as soon as we're done with the show, I'll uh, I'll chuck it up, and there'll be well, I mean you are on Patreon already, but I'll drop a link in the description as well. Gonna go forwards just a little bit. No, I think these need to be even smaller. They should be just like a tiny decorative thing that people don't notice. Um. I also need to offset them. <laughs> Thanks. The whole no tree is just lagging now. Let's come back into here. Uh, what are we looking at? Oh, I need to um, just momentarily turn that off. There we go. Let's try and speed things up a bit. It is. Yeah. I don't think there's any input mesh actually. Yeah, we've done it again. This is what I said I was going to stop doing after November. I was like, oh, I can't wait to do some normal modeling. 
definitely not going to do any of this again. And then just immediately, I can't help myself. How do you guys deal with the daylight savings? I deal with it really badly. I hate it so much. I lose an hour. Like tomorrow, well, it's not like it changes how I get up. It's just, it sounds worse when it's like, oh, you got up at three in the afternoon. It's like, that's a bit more shameful. Actually, let's transform Suzanne because I need this to be still in line with the, um, with this one. Let's go down in the Z. That should be offsetting nicely. And uh, come down a little bit. We're going to go back a little bit. And a little bit more down. There we go. There we go. <laughs> what a ridiculous thing. Uh, Rouge. Hey. I know, we changed clocks. It's so weird. I just find it really hard to get up in the morning, like disproportionately difficult. I think like when I used to be, when I used to date, I found it really easy to get up in the morning. And then just like, as soon as I stopped dating, I was just like, no reason to get up. Not that there's no reason to get up because you're single. I just mean like, there's, I don't know, there was like a person there. So you would get up, you'd wake up and you'd get up. I don't know. You'll have to get up earlier when you start your job, aren't you? I don't think so. I think I'm probably still going to get up in the afternoon. I think I will probably try to get up a little bit earlier, but I don't even know when the rest of the team is going to be up. Um, so, Control J. This is our Suzanne's. And we'll also add her to the top stuff as well. Um, don't let the man bring you down. <laughs> okay, we've got Suzanne's in that. We need Suzanne's up here as well. Um, I'm not going to do it in the back section. I'll just do it in this one. That should be fine. Yeah, whatever the... Well, I, I mean, I asked them of their core hours. And, uh... They basically said, we can't do core hours because it's an international team. And I was like, great, that suits me fine. I will, I will get my, uh, I will get my hours sorted, I promise. I know it's bad for me because like, like I know my productivity is down like a hundred percent at least. Like I'm, I used to be at least double as productive and I'm just not anymore, which is kind of frustrating. Like when you're aware of it as well, it's like, oh, if only I could like <laughs> control my body. Right, I need to find the ends of my curves. Are you doing this modular to fit pieces together? I mean, I'm kind of just building it as I go. I mean, I suppose you could break it down technically if I can do each one of these frames, but uh, yeah, oh, no worries, Riaz. I know it's really late for you already. Like it's 10 o'clock here and I started at Five ish, five thirty. So I could definitely also do with shooting off at some point to find some food. Now we need this one, it needs to happen before. So curve to mesh join these ones. All right, these ones, these ones. Um, I only really need one at the bottom. We'll see. <laughs> Using snapping in nodes. I'm so glad I'm just like PSA. You can now snap in nodes and not snap in 3D. They've been separated. Thank goodness. That was just such an annoying thing that I would always get really frustrated with. 
I need to resave my new like default start files, but you can now separate them. Okay, so instance on points. We are instancing on these points. We are instancing Suzanne on those points. Why the rotation? Uh, we are instancing Suzanne's geometry on those points. Yes, separate snapping. It's been so long coming. Okay, selection is going to be endpoints only, and I can probably maybe I should separate this. Well, no, actually, it should be fine. Right, let's um, switch with an endpoint selection. Vector into the rotation, there we go. What's the difference between points and attributes? Do you mean fields and attributes? Um, a fields you just sort of plug through together so like these diamond sockets, they take a field, basically means a different, um, well, a field can be a different value per mesh element. Generally, you're talking about points, like vertices. Um, but yeah, attributes is the older system, which was much more based on writing out named attributes, which you can now do again, but it's not really recommended. Oops. Right, let's go something like that. And then for the inputs, we can just put them on their face. Pi by two. And go to zero here. It's like that one wants to be <laughs> points are pointy, but also flat. Thanks, Purse. That's great. <laughs> Let's grab another switch node. Oh god, not all of them. This one's going to be where the index equals something because I'm just interested in where it is. Uh, this end one so that I can rotate it to face down the aisle. So index, here we go. This one goes into our pulse here. I'm just basically stacking operations here. And then I need to find oh. it's like somewhere around here. Number 16. All right, pi by two. And we're just going to rotate it this way, pi by two. Hey, <laughs> Darren. Turn down our scale. It's looking good. Now we can see the whole thing. Oh, wait, now it needs to join in, doesn't it? So let's just plug you in there. Oh, did I put you off there as well? Yeah, that's probably fine. Um, maybe these are too big. And I can also move them along the local Z, local or something. And then we can push them forwards a bit. Alrighty. So now we've got these. Wait, have I turned on? 
Oh wait, I have not got these ones being realized. So instances, realize instances, that's back to front. On this one, there we go. Yeah, I'll take it. Let me get an array. Ah, oh, it's like a plan coming together. Unless it crashes. Come on. Oh no. <laughs> okay, we need a fixed <laughs> fixed offset on our array. Putty, is it? Interesting. So we should be arraying by 2.8 times 2. I wish I'd used whole numbers. 5.6, there we go, in the y-axis. Looking good. Uh, I should probably add a wall or something to the back. Maybe it's fine. Uh, it would be cool if we could do like, I don't know, maybe six and then go around the end and then come back with six. I might regret this, but let's go. Uh, let's do maybe 18. That might be too many. We will see. PC's not happy. Uh, grotesques, yeah. So a grotesque is uh, just something, uh, it's like a gargoyle. Well, gargoyles are, gargo gargoyles are, gar are called gargoyles because of the sound they make when rain goes through them. But if it's not a gargoyle, which means if it doesn't have a, if it's not functioning as the spout of a drain, of like a, um, as the spout of a downpipe, like a rain downpipe, then, oh pretty, um, then it's grotesque. One of my PC stats, clearly not enough, my, my fan is going crazy. Uh, I think it's, uh, I've got a 3080 on a Ryzen 9 3900 and um, yeah, Geometry Nodes needs CPU, it computes on the CPU. Here we go, something like this. So the next thing to do here would be add a new geometry nose tree and we're just going to bend this and I really hope it doesn't crash or break. I'm sure it's fine. I mean we're already dealing with 11 and a half million verts. Geometry nodes should be fine. So we're going to bend in the z-axis that's fine. Oh good lord. <laughs> Procedural gargoyle when if only. There's a, there's a lot of really cool um, gargoyle designs, actually. Okay, let's see if we can bend this. I think I'm going to need 540 degrees. This might take a minute. Will it bend? The answer is yes, absolutely. Ah, but it's kind of not happy about it. I think what we need to do is transform. George knows has taken a performance hit right recently, has it? Hey, Sid, how's it going? Uh, this is kind of based on the Notre Dame or the Notre Suzanne. Uh, we're just kind of wrapping it up, I think. <laughs> 950. It's just, I need to rotate this, I think. It should be fine if I rotate it. Right? Come on. 
Oh, okay, we did something. Oh, damn, that looks so good. Oh, no, I just went into first-person camera mode and it's crashed. Oh, okay, not quite crashed. Eh? How about that? <laughs> this is really cool. Oh, my God. Okay, 540 degrees was kind of a weird choice, but how freaking cool is this? Okay, um, I was just going to do it like there and back again. In fact, maybe I'll still just try that. Um, let me mute this for a sec. We might end up rendering the circle one because that's pretty tight. I'm a fan. So, but for just for now. Where do we want our, our thing to be, our center? We should have it about here. So let's paste cursor location, custom center, 540 degrees, I think, uh, the carousels. It actually looks like a, a, a really fancy gazebo. That's uh, with the little horses, yeah. Um, Okay, limit min, let's go from one third to two thirds because we did enough. Yeah, so it should be like six down, six around, and then six back. I'm not sure where this is going to take us though, like one, two, three, four, five, six. So actually, it should be at the top of this one. It should be just here. Okay, let's unmute this one. Oh man. Oh, did it just work? Oh my God, it did. It's almost like I planned it. Okay, the end is definitely too tight. So uh, let's maybe make this out of four parts. Uh, so six and then four and then I'm trying to work out what fraction that would be. Um, so wait, we need to come down to so 16. So it needs to come from one and a half and then Okay, we're slightly offset. Oh wait, are we still doing? No, now it's saying four. Okay, so we need to go from, oh my God, I'm so confused. Right, so we've got four, that's the end. And then we should have six on each side, which is like four plus two. Um, and now make one that lets you draw it using a curve. Yeah, do you know how easy it would be to make this drawn with a curve? You could literally just use a curve modifier. <laughs> I feel like it's it's harder to make it do what you actually want it to do. Um, oh my god, what fraction is this? If I need to go... Oh, I can literally just do it like this, can't I? We need to go 6 sixteenths. There we go. And then the other end should be uh, 10 sixteenths. <laughs> yeah, it will take a long time to load. Okay. Did I just make it tighter? Maybe I needed to make it. Oh God, come on. So I think I need to make it 720 degrees because that's like four times 180. Yeah, these milliseconds, they are heavy going. 
Did we do it? Hey, that actually looks a little bit better. Look at this weird Suzanne. Stretched all over the place. Ridiculous. All right, great. Well, that was a <laughs> that was an enlightening experience. So let me save this one. Uh, let me also just I'm just gonna uh, do this differently. We're gonna go for a full just a normal 360, but with no limits and wrapped onto itself, and that can be our final render. Oh god, the times. Ah. <laughs> beautiful lady uh, let's go come on limit max is going to be one there we go and uh, I think I can't even really remember how these work uh, do I turn off custom center Is that, is that a bit of annotation? I wonder if it should go the other way, like uh, minus 360 and maybe minus 365. <laughs> this needs a lava lake around it. I don't know, it looks kind of neat. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this for what, like four or five hours of work? Just for like playing? I kind of want it to have like a bit of a roof though. Do I just add a cylinder to it? Of course the answer is yes. Uh, or maybe I just stick a grid on before so it gets bent the same. It says a thousand milliseconds, but it's sure as hell not taking one second. It's like 20 or 30 seconds. I wish I could cache this. I mean, I kind of could. I don't. I could, actually. Yeah, we could just add a something like this and then it will get wrapped around. Um, let's do that. What's the easiest way to do that? If I just find the length of it, bounding box. No, oh, I should just use my nodes. Okay. Detailing on the, I don't know. I think the detailing is, yeah, some sort. I think as long as it's kind of a you know like a repetitive pattern, it's fairly good for detailing. But um, you all are throwing words at me. I don't understand. <laughs> Pen pendentives. I thought that was the thing that Dumbledore watched his dreams in. Is that pensive? Uh, let's grab ETK bounding box. So we've got some actual usable information. And we will take ETK cylinder so that I've got an actual uh, usable edge that I can use. ETK cylinder. Oh, I don't think we have a single Boolean in this. We've done well. Okay, cylinder. I love how the viewing of a cylinder at the end of all of these other operations is just like crazy now. Um, let's turn off some of these, which is just taking up a lot of computational effort for the computer. And I'm going to join these two up. And we're going to make it so it can just draw this along the top. So the size in the x axis is the depth and we're not going to stick on the cap so I just need to manually go in here and turn this off. There we go. 
<laughs> yeah, no booleans. I don't, I think we tried with a boolean one thing and then I was like, uh, I think we could probably get away with just deleting stuff. Uh, where are you and what's your, uh, I'm from the UK. It is currently 23 minutes past 10 in the evening. Let's transform this, let's rotate it onto its side. Let's rotate it onto its other side. And I need to also, come on. Oh no, it's keeping that other face. Oh, maybe that doesn't matter for this. Yeah. Any group in parameters? <laughs> yeah, we could actually link a whole lot into this. That would be pretty fun. Uh, we're gonna scale this minus one. No, we're not. Uh, okay, well, let's go 90 degrees and then we can just rotate it. Apparently in the z-axis. Oh my god, got gimbal lock. We need another transform. Rotating it this way. How does geometry nodes handle splines? Um, well, yeah. Basically everything I've done with this is made out of splines. So pretty good, pretty good, pretty fast. Uh, we're going to use toolkit utilities align mesh by mesh because I want to plug it onto the roof. And we also want to align Y Oops. to that almost down. So one Y, one Z. Oops. There we go. Something like that is fine. Um, and then I will just move it again. So a little bit down until it just touches, and a little bit in because we're actually going for the. because um, <clears throat> we're going for the center point of these. There we go. Cool, now we just need to scale this up. Um, something like that. Increase our vertices. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Parallels, let's grab maybe 30 because I want to have high resolution as we extend this along. It's the arrays that are slow as anything. My lord. There we go. And now we can bend it. Oh, sweet. Definitely need some more points on here. So let's go like 128. Um, oh, actually it was the other one that needed more. See if that improves anything. My guess is no. I wonder if we can use. Um... No, I doubt we can. <laughs> Blender doesn't feel good anymore. I think. Uh, I think what I need to do is do a basically base it on edge angle. No, oh, come on, please, please hurry. Come on. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just gonna give it a bit of 
your time. Okay. So we're going to put this on here and we're going to use an input uh, mesh edge angle. Unsigned angle is less than something. That can be our selection. And our something is going to be like less than like 50 degrees. So uh, less. It's a shame that shade smooth is set per face rather than per edge because it's the edges that it's smoothing out like why why is it why why it leaves you with some like really weird janky results when you do it this way <laughs> uh, let's grab the uh, Pi by 2 would be 90, so let's go pi by 4, that's 45 degrees-ish. It should be face corner, really? Is it not face? Yeah, shade smooth is per face. The forces will be pushed out and the height of the dome is less than the radius. Um, oh, doesn't look good. Oh wait, maybe it's the shade smooth. Like I want everything to be smoothed, but only where it makes sense. Still not good. Let's get down to 0.5. Yeah, it's a bit better. Is a bit better. Right, let's just throw this on the floor. I'm not sure. Well, for, okay. I keep having like an idea to do something else, and it's like, okay, let's just fix this one thing. Align mesh by mesh. X and Y. We're just going to center it. That's the first thing. doing an ultimate dash. You'll be able to download this file if you want to do auto mesh with it. Um, let me just mute this. 27 milliseconds, my ass. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here, to be fair, that you can, like, pick up. Generally, like, the making of the, like, balustrade was probably quite an interesting one, because there's, like, a whole bunch of curve control stuff like manual splines and like doing the float curves and stuff inside shaders. Sorry, inside the node tree. Um, there we go, that's centered. Right, save, add plane, alt G, scale up. Set as a shadow catcher. Turn off face orientation, that's really confusing stuff. Uh, turn off scene world. Let's go for somewhere sunny. Oh, I've just realized that the back of this is open. I don't really want it to be open. I want that to be shut. Um, right. Where do we have our balcony edge? This one. So we are pulling it back. Uh, I think I just need to extrude it and then basically scale them to nothing. Um, let's just disable some of these slow ones. <laughs> it seems about right. Yeah, I did try and do it more or less actual scale. Okay, let's grab the back of this. We're going to extrude again. We're going to extrude the top. And... Oh, it totally looks like we can just... Why is this offset scale clamped? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. There we go. That wasn't so hard. Something like that. Let's uh, just merge by 
distance by a bit more distance. There we go. Yeah, still looks all right. Alrighty. Oh, do we have to do something up here? I was going to make another one of these edges, actually, wasn't I? Okay, let's very quickly, very quickly, let's do that. Uh, I just need one more edge coming from this point zero to somewhere else. In the okay, not the x axis, we're going in the minus y minus 2.8, and this one is going to get curve tilt. Positive 90. There we go, nice. That should. Uh, should cover things. Oh, and I need it to be. I need to have a different radius. Why is this down here? All right, we're so close. <laughs> the Suzanne gargoyles. Yeah, you can make so many things with Suzanne. So many things. In fact, I know it's a cheat, but we're going to make this Suzanne. We're going to pretend it was always Suzanne. And delete the original box. Add monkey. Oh no, up there. Add a monkey, there we go. Now it's all Suzanne. That's how you do it. Yes, we do. So we don't want that one to be on our lower section, but we do want it to be on the top section. So I need to join it very selectively. Uh, is this on the bottom one? Yes. I need this to be different. And one of them to not have it all, and one of them to have it all. There we go. I think that works. Just covering the seams. Cool. Uh, is that the thing that's available or uh, if you yeah if you want the toolkit go to the description there's a link to my toolkit in there it's got literally like hundreds of nodes or like 100 or 110 120 something like that I think it's about to have a whole bunch more because I need to add just a bunch of selection stuff and as well Riaz was saying that I could add his cube no marching squares which is good for doing uh, I'm pretty sure like discontinuous cross sections, which is nuts. So hopefully we can play with that. All right, let's turn back on the final one. Cool. A weird mushroom building. Sweet. Well, there we go. That's uh, <laughs> that's about your lot. Thanks for staying. Some of you have literally stayed for the full five hours. So I do appreciate the company. And 
I hope I've been able to offer something of interest or entertainment and uh, I will upload the file to Patreon that will be linked in the description or you know for those of you who are already on Patreon you will have access to it uh, also with the Patreon um, you don't you can just like you can get everything with all of the tiers so don't feel like you have to go on to like the five dollar or the ten dollar or whatever it's like everything's kind of cheap for everyone the only reason it's there is so that people can donate if they want to cool i'm not really sure how to uh, render this in a way which is interesting for social media maybe i should just post the no tree like not even bother with the finished thing cool well there we go there we have it uh enjoy hope you have a good week i will see you in hopefully a week if i can get myself streaming next weekend otherwise it'll be the weekend after in which case i'll probably talk about unity because i'll have been there so there we go hope you'll have a great week hope you're well and healthy and uh try to do something nice for yourself in the next 24 hours have a bath have yourself some chocolate all right i'm gonna go see you later folks